Please settle down, everyone. We'll start the meeting in two minutes. The resumption of the budget briefing on the fiscal year 2023, sources of financing and expenditure levels, and the budget proposals of departments, agencies, Corporations is hereby called to order. Committee Secretary, please acknowledge the House members and guests physically present today, as well as those attending via Zoom. May we now acknowledge the House officials and members, as well as the officials of the Commission on Elections, who are physically present, as well as those attending via Zoom video conference today. At the session hall, Deputy Minority Leader, Franz Castro. Deputy Majority Leader, Wilter Palma. Deputy uh, Minority Leader, Florence Gabriel Bem Noel. Deputy Majority Leader and Vice Chair, David J.J. Suarez. We have also Vice Chair, Francisco Jose Bingo Matugas II. Vice Chair, Raul Angelo Gil Bongalon. And Vice Chair, Ching Bernos. Members, we have Representative Loreto Acharon, Representative Rodolfo Ompong Ordanes, Representative Ramon Jolo Rivila III, Representative J. Florence T. Reyes. Joining us also via Zoom, Deputy Majority Leader Linda Bolilla, 
Deputy Majority Leader Alfred De Los Santos, Deputy Minority Leader Bernadette B. H. Herrera D., Vice Chairperson Jose C. Alvarez, Vice Chair Mary Mitzi Cahayon Uy, Vice Chair Alan Aldo Duhali, Vice Chair Joseph Jolo, Jojo Lara, Vice Chair Roy Loyola, Vice Chair Baby Aline Vargas Alfonso, Representative Maria Vanessa Aumentado, Representative Drixie May Cardema, Representative Ricardo S. Cruz Jr., Representative Faustino Michael Carlos D. III, Representative Antonieta Yodela, Representative Jaime Fresnedi, Representative Edwin Garjola, Representative Charis Ann Hernandez, Representative Daphne Lagon, Representative Sunny Lagon, Representative Jervi Luistro, Representative Alan Jesse Mangawang, Representative Doris Maniguez, Representative Bay Dimpol Mastura, Representative Maria Rene Ann Lourdes Matibag, Representative Arnan C. Panaligan, Representative Agustina Dominique Dicitina Pancho, Representative Salvador Plato, Representative Ramon uh, Joseph Tan, Representative Samuel Versosa Jr., Representative Loreto Acharon, Representative Eleanor Bulot Begtang, Representative Maximo Dalog Jr., Representative Edsel Galeos, Representative Journey Jet Nisai, Representative Brian Rebilla, Representative Laarni Labin Roque, Representative Ron Salo, Representative Edgardo Selvame, Representative Reynaldo Tamayo, Representative Maria Zamora. And from the COMELEC, may we acknowledge the Chairman of the COMELEC, Attorney Erwin George Garcia, Commissioner Aimee Perolino, Commissioner Nelson Celis, Attorney Bartolome Sinocruz Jr., Attorney Teofisto Elnas Jr., Attorney Helen Aguila Flores. That's all. Mr. Chairman. Vice Chair J.J. Suarez and Vice Chair Bing uh, Matugas and our colleagues, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good morning. Com Comelec Chairman George Erwin Garcia, commissioners and other officials of the commission, Distinguished guests, members of the House of Representatives, mga kababayan, magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. The Commission on Election was created in 1940 by virtue of an amendment to the 1935 Constitution. It is one of only three constitutional amendments or commissions uh, in the 1987 Constitutions the others being the Commission on Audit Civil Service Commission. Through its 82 years existence, the Commission has remained steadfast in its role as the sole authority and defender of the universal right to suffrage. The Commission successfully conducted the May 2022 national presidential elections where 55,291,000 975 voters cast their votes to elect national and local government official, the highest ever turnout of any election in history. Moreover, the agency holds a high of 82% citizens trust and approval rating. COMELEC owes its recent success to the consistent implementation of registration drives for new voters from the youth sector. The agency also implemented gender-specific voters, information, and education campaigns nationwide. It conducted numerous overseas voters' information and training seminars for the Vote Anywhere initiative. The Commission is at a moment preparing for the December 5, 2022 Barangay and SK elections nationwide. The 2023 budget includes the usual regular programs expenses such as personal services, 3,533,467,000 pesos, which constitute the Commission's largest expense following by MOE at 818,000,000 266,000. Automatic appropriations 
and capital outlays rounds of majority of the NEP 2023 approved budget. Magandang umaga po at mabuhay po tayong lahat. Uh, uh, we acknowledge our speaker, uh, especially uh, our serving and our majority leader speaker, Ferdinand Martin Romaldes, and majority floor leader, uh, Manix Dalipe. Uh, Vice Chair Matugas. Thank you very much, uh, Chairman Saldi. Uh, good morning, po, uh, Speaker Martin and uh, Majority Leader Manix. Uh, we'll now proceed with our uh, budget hearing. Uh, I believe that our committee secretary already distributed copies of the presentation of uh, COMELEC to everybody through our uh, Viber group. In the interest, interest of time, may I call uh, Deputy Majority Leader uh, Palma for his motion? Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, it's already 10.37, uh, in and, and in the interest of time, uh, I move that we dispense with the presentation of the uh, outside representation of the COMELEC uh, so that we can right away uh, proceed with the interpolation. So move, Mr. Chairman. Second. Any second? second? Okay, there's a second. Uh, to, uh, there's a motion and it's been seconded. So we will now dispense with the presentation and now proceed directly with the interpolation from the members of the House. Uh, so, magandang umaga again, especially to our Chairman, Chairman uh, Garcia, and to the uh, other Commissioners, Commissioner Ferolino and Commissioner Celis, and the rest of the Comelic family. So, una po nating tatawagin uh, from the minority for uh, his interpolation, uh, Representative JC Abalos. Maraming salamat po, Mr. Chairman. First, uh, magandang araw po sa Comelec family, uh, kay Chairman Garcia, sa ating commissioners, uh, my esteemed colleagues, and sa ating mga guests ngayon. Magandang umaga po. Uh, first, I would like to congratulate Chairman Garcia for his recent appointment in the Comelec. I am confident that his previous commitment to transparency will tremendously help in maintaining the integrity of the Paul body. I would also like to thank the Comelec family for being here today and presenting us their budget plans. Um, for my first question, po, Mr. Chair, uh, the Constitution provides and guarantees the independence and fiscal autonomy of the COMELEC. And I understand po that the provincial offices of the COMELEC relies on LGUs for office spaces as per Section 55 of the Omnibus Election Code. Um, that being said, I would like to ask the COMELEC on the, regarding um, their view on the move to amend this provision that would provide them separate and independent office spaces. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Your Honours, maganda maganda umaga po. Thank you very much for that question. We'd like to take this opportunity to expound on that matter. Alam niyo po, Your Honours, we have 81 provincial election supervisors' offices. And unfortunately, until present, uh, the local government units are providing, as, as correctly pointed out uh, by the Honorable uh, 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 Congressman from the party list, that uh, indeed, binibigyan po nila kami ng mga office spaces. And ang, the issue is whether that will seriously compromise the independence of the Commission election. I can honestly tell you, Your Honours, with, with high conviction that this will not affect our independence. However, Your Honour, if we are to pursue the path of amending Section 55 of the Omnibus Election Code, that will really mean a lot of money, a lot of budget, which unfortunately, Your Honours, we are fully aware that as of this time, the, go the government is really pressed on just having a very little budget for to, to spend uh, dahil napakadami pong ibang paggagastusan. Realistically, indeed, we are envisioning a future that our COMELEC offices will be ours and ours alone. But unfortunately, because of budget constraints, we cannot do that. But kahit po pinapatira po nila kami, binibigyan po nila kami ng bahay, again, 
the guarantee from Comedic East. And we have proven that even in the la last election, in the previous elections, we can still maintain our independence. Hopefully, po, with the kind help of this Committee on Appropriation and the Congress in general and the entire government in general, we are hoping that in the future we can build individual homes for our individual offices. Thank you very much, Your Honors. For my next question for Mr. Chair, uh, the COMELEC deals with big data. Does the Commission have its own unit that handles and manages this data? Uh, yes, Your Honors, uh, Mr. Chair. We have the Information and the Technology Department, and we are actually conti a, a continuous process of improving our systems and programs. Yung pong DBM, meron po silang uh, requirement lagi, yung tinatawag nilang MITHI, at meron din po tayong tinatawag na IPPR na kung saan uh, requirement po na every three years it will have to be, uh, we have to defend that so that that will be included in our uh, budget. As far as the community is concerned, likewise, Your Honors, we, uh, in, in view of the, the number of data that we are presently holding and accepting, we are going to start the digitalization process. For the information, <laughs> excuse me, Your Honors, uh, of the body, the COMELEC uh, Information Technology Department is now, is, now, uh, is now ISO certified. And so because of this development, we are going to improve more on the system and uh, the programming of the commission election. Ang pinaka best example po, uh, uh, your honors, ay yung pong aming uh, precinct finder kung natatandaan po nung nakarang election. Uh, madami pong hindi nakakita, pero mas madami po ang nakakita. 25 million hits po yung, uh, yung na, na, nakakuha na nung, nung precinct finder. Doon sa 25 million hits, Your Honors, 35,000 ang nag-attempt na ihak ang system namin. Unfortunately, in 2019, Your Honors, it was hack. But fortunately, in 2022, the last election, regardless of their tries, 35,000 tries, they failed to hack our system because of the improved programming and system of the Commission on Elections. Mr. Chair, I would also like to know, Pope, um, how much is the budget allotment of the COMELEC for data management? For data management? Yes, Your Honor. May I uh, respectfully inquire from our uh, budget officer, Your Honor? Your Honours, sorry for that, Your Honour, 253 million for IS, ISSP. For my next question po, Mr. Chair, on the topic of elections, one of the most important elements of a democracy is the right to suffrage. And I would like to commend the COMELEC for a very successful voter turnout, which is around 84%. Um, I would like to ask po the COMELEC if they think the declaration of the Malacanang of May 9 as a special non-working holiday contributed to this high turnout. Definitely, Your Honor, one of the contributing factors. But I think po, because of the passion and enthusiasm of our people, they really troop during the election of May 9, un unprecedented in our history po. I know for a fact that individual members of this, com of this commission can attest to the fact that even in your own districts, in your own provinces and municipalities, sadya po talagang hindi po overflowing po yung mga, yung mga bumoto. Siguro nakadagdag talaga yung pong uh, declaration. We always do that po uh, for all elections. And uh, because that, that was really the case for all presidential elections. Talaga pong mataas lagi. Pagka presidential, may isang po bumababa kapag ka... Uh, barangay and SK election na lang or midterm election, pero pag po national and local election for president, vice pre president, and such other positions, lagi pong matas. 84.1%, Your Honor. Several fa factors, but surely one of those factors was the one you mentioned, Your Honor. 
Mr. Chair, I would like to know the COMELEC's thoughts on Article 94 of the Labor Code, which deals with the right to holiday pay, which um, designates uh, the day of general election among the list of regular holidays. We will definitely support any move to consider the conduct of the election, that day of the conduct of the election, as a regular holiday entit entitling all our workers to additional pay. That will be for, of course, uh, Congressman Mendoza of the TUCP will be very happy to hear, surely, that uh, we, the COMELEC, will be fully supportive of that initiative. Mr. Chair, I would like to uh, manifest po na ang kagawaan po kasi natin tuwing national or general election ay pinagkihintay natin yung karamihan ng elector electorate o mga kababayan natin na abangan yung announcement ng Pangulo na gawing special non-working holiday ito. Special non-working the special non-working holiday meaning 30% lang po yung dadagdag sa daily rate ng manggagawa kung pumasok po sila ng trabaho. Samantala, Kung magboboto po sila at hindi magtatrabaho, no work, no pay po yung mangyayari. Kaya naman po, yung ka ka isa sa mga unang panukalang patas ko na inihain ng office ko sa Kongreso ay yung Election Day Holiday Act o ang House Bill Number no. 755. Gagawin itong regular holiday yung Election Day. I would like to get the views lang po sana of our distinguished guests from COMELEC on this proposed legislation. We will support your honor. 100% your proposal. Uh, Mr. Chair, just to wrap up po, um, I hope we consider House Bill 755 in the 19th Congress that seeks to declare elections as a regular holiday. Kasi it will free every Filipino from the absurd situation of having to choose whether to exercise their right to vote or their right to work in order to feed their families. Also, with regard to separate and independent office space, I reiterate that this could safeguard the autonomy also of the poll body. Lastly, according to Moore's law, computing power would double 18 to 24 months based on the current rate of technological advancement. This gives us an idea of how fast technology develops. One reason that companies and organizations who deal with data prefer to take on third-party vendors and providers to have technology, available infrastructure, and skills of the people. But you see, Mr. Chair, that the government has always been one of the biggest users or subscribers for this kind of technology, and we will only get bigger and larger in the coming years. Hence, I think it's about time that we really look into how, possibly together with the private sector, we can keep up with the developing technology in-house, or at the very least, build the appropriate infrastructure that can support our technological needs employ highly skilled experts who will handle and manage the technology and make it available for each and every government entity, such as the COMELEC. Yun lang naman po, at maraming salamat po. Maraming salamat po, Your Honor. Thank you, uh, Representative Avalos, for your interpolation, and thank you, Mr. Uh, Chairman Garcia. Before we proceed, no, may I remind uh, our distinguished colleagues that its member is given five minutes for questioning or interpolation excluding the response of the resource persons. When you hear the bell sound, it means you only have 30 seconds to wind up with your questions. To proceed, uh, we, the chair now calls from the majority, Deputy Majority Leader, Wilter Palma for his uh, interpolation. Thank you, Mr. Please chair. Proceed. First, uh, congratulations, Attorney George uh, Garcia. Thank you for very being much, uh, confirmed by the Commission on Appointments. Congratulations again, sir. Thank you, I'll sir. Go, uh, the hottest issue. Uh, how much was allocated uh, in the GAA for the Barangay and the Skate election uh, December of 2022? For the GAA, your honors of uh, Mr. Chair, for the 2020, to the 2022 GAA, we have 8.441 billion pesos, Your Honors. 8.4, correct? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. correct. Eight point out of the, Mr. Chair, if I may, out of the 8.4, uh, how much is the present uh, balance, excluding or minus the operational administrative uh, costs? As of today, Your Honor, we have 7.5 billion pesos remaining of the 8.4 billion. That's still intact, sir? That's still intact, Your Honor. Okay. 
in the event that we will postpone the election to December of 2023, that's one year after, how much uh, is the estimate that we're going to spend for 2023? Thank you very much uh, for that question, uh, your, Mr. Chairman, Your Honours. Uh, earlier this morning when this representation and the members of the Commission appeared before the Committee on Appropriation on the, on the uh, hearing on the substitute bill for the postponement, this representation intimated, based on our computation, that we'll be needing at least 17 billion pesos, 17 billion pesos, less 7.5 billion, more or less 9 billion pesos, if we're going to postpone the election by May of 2023, Your Honors. However, if we are going to postpone the election by December of 2023, we'll be needing an additional, uh, 80, we'll be needing the budget of 18 billion pesos, less um, uh, 7.5 and therefore more or less 10 billion pesos is still necessary, Your Honor. Of course, aside from the 7.5 billion that we have right now. In short, we need 10 billion. Yes, Your Honor. For 2023. That is right, Your Honor. How about, sir, if we're going to postpone it again to May or 2024? Any date for that matter? Uh, thank you very much for that question, like Your Honor. Unfortunately, Your Honor, uh, the commission election was not able to make a computation because uh, we would like really to to appeal to Congress, not only to the House of Representatives that, and to the Senate, that uh, no postponement should or no resetting of the election should be done in 2024 when we are about to prepare for the 2025 elections. So, hanggang 2023 lang po, Your Honor, pasensya na po ang aming computation para sa resetting ng ating election. In short, sir, hanggang 2023 lang tayo, December lang. At most. Yes, Your All Honor. Right. That's right. Uh, you said that uh, we have 7.5 billion. Do you think this will be enough for the uh, December 2022 election the, for the Barangay NSK election? That, that is enough, uh, Your Honor. Unfortunately, the, the 8.441 billion pesos does not factor in the tax implication of the services that will be rendered by our electoral board members as well as other poll workers. Ang ibig sabihin po, Your Honor, uh, doon po sa, sa 8.441, hindi po naka-factor in yung 20% na withholding tax po na ipinapataw sa ating po mga poll workers. And that's the reason why, Your Honors, if I may, doon po sa computation namin na binigay na 17 billion for May or 18 billion for December, naka-factor in po doon na definitely the COMELEC will pursue that our poll workers should be, or the COMELEC should be the one to shoulder the 20% taxes of our poll workers. Kawawa naman po kung babawasan pa yung 10,000, 9,000, 9,000, and 6,000 na tinatanggap po nila. So in short, Mr. King, uh, we need additional 7.5 billion for the 20% withholding tax. If the election will push through in uh, December. Yeah, you need additional uh, funds to cover the 20% since according to you, you are going to shoulder the, uh, you're going to shoulder the withholding tax. Yes, Your Honor. If we are to shoulder the withholding tax for December 2022 election, we'll be needing at least 3.2 billion pesos. 3.2? 3.2, Your okay. Honor. How about if December of 2023, how much is the tax? More or less, Your Honor, the additional taxes will be about 6, six billion pesos, Your Honor. So, totaling six, 16 billion, uh, if that would be held on December 2023. Yes. Am I correct, sir? That's your correct. Yes. Honor. Now, uh, do you think, do you think, uh, so that in, in the 2020, is the 20 uh, is the 16 billion incorporated in your proposal for GAA of 2023? Not no, no, Your Honor, because unfortunately we have not we have not uh, uh, anticipated that there will be a, a an election by of Barangay and SK by 2023. That's why our proposed budget, Your Honor, as a, as the President's budget has proposed to Congress, is only 5.22 uh, billion, Your Honor. Anyway, uh, I have so much. I have so many questions, but I'll proceed with the most, you uh, know, 
2025, uh, in your press uh, statement, and uh, you said that uh, there will be some changes in the 2025. Uh, especially in the election of 2025. Can we hear your plan for 2025 elections, sir? Thank you very much, Mr. Chair, Your Honours. We are still waiting for Congress as to whether we are going to hold the election hybrid. During the previous Congress, Your Honours, there was a proposal in the Senate uh, which was passed at the committee level that will, uh, with the, that will instill a hybrid election. For the, for the next succeeding election. Unfortunately, it was never passed by the Senate, and I think there was no counterpart measure on the part of the House of Representatives. That will practically change the entire picture if we're going to conduct a hybrid system of election. However, if Congress will deem it necessary to stick with Republic Act 9369, our present automation law, then the change will only be that we will request Congress that instead of, that if we can retire the 90,000 vote counting machines that we have right now, these are old machines already. And we honestly believe but that by 2025, kung yung 2022 po yung honors, hindi man ganun kadami ang, ang nasira or subject of repair, wala pa naman pong isang libo halos yun. Kaya lamang po, sa 2025, we believe na magkakaproblema na po tayo sa mga makinang yan. And so, the change is, hopefully, Congress, you will allow us, your honors, to lease, or if not purchase, lease new machines for 2025. Sir, kindly explain what you mean by hybrid. Yes, your honor. Uh, when we conduct our election for Barangay and SK, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's manual, meaning to say, your honor, uh, when, when the people will vote, uh, we will be voting, writing the names of the candidate for Barangay and SK. In a hybrid system of election, the same ballots for the, 20, the use during the 2022 elections will be used. You are going to shade. Uh, depending on what Congress would like us to do, but uh, just from, for the sake of uh, at least explaining the same thing, meron po tayo sa presinto, pagbilang na po ng balota, bibilamin po yung balota ng mga guro, and then pag sinusulat sa, sa blackboard, sinusulat sa election returns sa table, and then pe pwede po I, I, uh, magkakaroon po ng uh, pepede po nandyan yung isang machine ihuhulog po yung uh, balota sa machine. And so, pagkatapos po mabilang, isusuma total yung boto sa, sa blackboard tapos isusuma total yung boto sa election returns at yung machine will tally, katulad ng ginagawa po natin. And then we will have to compare kung parehas yung result ng machine at parehas yung manual count. Ang importante po doon, based sa mga proponents po ng hybrid election, at least ma makikita na binibilang ng mga teachers po yung mga balota na hinulog natin sa mga makina. And so, Cong uh, the Senate proposed at that time certain percentage lang. If the discrepancy is not more than 3%, proceed to transmit the result. If the discrepancy is more than 5%, then recount the ballots. So, ang ibig sabihin po, we are com what we are computerizing is actually the electronic transmission of the results from your precinct to the Bayan to the Ciudad, or from the Ciudad or to the Bayan to the provinces or provincial board of canvassers. Pero yung pagbilang po, Your Honor, is manual. That's why it's a hybrid system of election. So, in short, Chair, in, in short, a young manual, sir, would be on the precinct level. Ang transmission will be on electronics. That, that's right, sir. Your okay. Honor. Sir, uh, you said earlier that uh, uh, we want to replace the vote counting machine if ever uh, the pleasure of the uh, House of Congress. What do you think, sir? Would it be costlier or it would be beneficial to have the hybrid uh, system of election? Uh, mas mahal po, Your Honors, ang hybrid system of election as compared to the fully computerized election. Siyempre po, mag magkakaroon po tayo yung honor ng mas mahabang period ng mga, ng mga guro. And therefore, katulad po na nangyayari sa amin, nagdagdag po kami ng kanilang uh, honorary. Noong nakarang election, yung mga nasirang makina, nagdagdag po tayo sa mga mahigit dalawang uh, libong guro po natin. Kapag po tayo ay nag-hybrid, uh, your honor, tayo po ay gagastos ng, pasensya na po, 42.3 billion pesos. Kapag po fully computerized, only your honor, tayo po ay gagastos ng 32 billion pesos. But sir, uh, 
no matter what the cost, for as long as there would be trust and uh, acceptability on the Filipino people as to the result. I think uh, the, the question of uh, uh, cost is, not, is immaterial. Uh, anyway, uh, do you recommend, uh, I still have 56 seconds, do you recommend for, for a hybrid so that we can do the necessary preparation for the bill so that uh, when we are going to file it, uh, there will be three, two and one half years more to go. Uh, we don't want to file the bill uh, we're in the, the span of time is so short. Yes, Your Honor, so long, so, Your Honor, so long as we are to increase the honoraria of teachers and electoral board members and other poll workers. Uh, that's very, very important because uh, sobra pong uh, tiring yung magiging trabaho po nila at medyo mas hahaba po yung pagboto po nila. Siguro, uh, my colleagues will, will agree also that uh, no matter what the cost is, for as long as uh, it would be a true, honest, and uh, uh, reflect the sentiments of our electorate, I think that's, that would be okay with, with uh, the House uh, or with Congress. Uh, anyway, uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman of the Commission on Election. Mr. Chair, thank, thank you, you very much Mr. for the Chairman. opportunity. Maraming salamat, uh, <coughs> Deputy Majority Leader uh, Walter Palma. To proceed, uh, we, may we call on uh, Deputy Minority Leader Franz Castro for her interpolation. Please proceed, uh, Hong Castro. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Kanina pa po ako natutuwa ano, sa binabanggit ng ating Chairman ng Commission on Election, kaugnay ng pagpapahalaga nila doon sa ating mga electoral board, which, which are composed of mostly teachers mula sa chairman, ay mula dun sa chair, uh, chairperson ng electoral board hanggang sa third member. Uh, ang tanong ko lang po kaugnay dito sa mapopospone na uh, BSKE elect, uh, BS, uh, Barangay SK election, so ano po yung plano ng COMELEC, uh, Mr. Chair, kaugnay ng honorarium? So, kasi masyadong na dismaya, no, yung mga teachers, doon sa nabawasan sila. So, ang ibibigay nyo, ah, nabawasan sila ng, ano, ano, ng tax. So, ang ibibigay nyo po ba sa eleksyon sa mga teachers natin ay yung neto? Neto na po o kakaltasan pa ninyo ng tax? Ano po ang plano, Mr. Kung, Chair? Kung sakasakali po, Mr. Chair, your honors, matutuloy tayo ngayon, December 2022, kakaltasan po sila ng 20%. So, yung 10,000 magiging 8,000 na lamang po yung 6,000 magbabawasan pa rin po ng 20%. Subalit, kung mapopospon po ang eleksyon sa December of 2020, uh, 2023 at uh, pagbibigyan po yung ating computation, yung nasubmit po namin sa Kongreso, uh, dahil ang COMELEC na po ang magsosholder ng 20%, so yung, yung pong 10,000 siyam na libo sa second member, tatasam na libo sa third member, at anim na libo sa ibang poll workers, ay yung po ang eksaktong uh, mabibigay na po sa kanila. Wala na pong bawas. Um, uh, positive po ano, sa bahagi ng mga kaguruan, yung ganong ano, no, maibibigay na honorarium sa ating mga teachers. Thank you po, uh, Mr. Chair. Now, um, Yung second topic ko po, uh, Mr. Chair, ay yung tungkol doon sa... Anyway, karaniwan naman itong nangyayari, ano? Yung nagkakaroon ng mga black props tungkol doon sa opposition o yung nagdaglalaban ng mga kandidato. Pero ito po, uh, Mr. Chair, may binanggit ang chairman natin ng COMELEC at uh, lalong-lalo na po si Attorney John Rex Laudyanko. Kaugnay noong, ano no, yung peke na resolusyon daw ng COMELEC kaugnay sa disqualification ng makabayan black. So, ano po ba yung mga pwede nating gawin sa mga ganitong mga pinalalabas na mga resolusyon na naka-identify po yung mga pangalan mga pangalan ng mga COMELEC officials? Kasi hindi lang po yun sa makabayan eh, sa mga local election din, nangyayari din po yun. Maraming salamat po, um, Mr. Chair, your honors. Actually po, nire-refer po namin lahat yan sa National Bureau of Investigation. Lahat po ng mga, mga matataas na opisyal ng COMELEC, palagay ko po kahit ako ngayon, ay sinisimula na po magkaroon na rin ng fake na signature. Nung nakaraang linggo lang po, may isang lumabas na isang uh, 
isang uh, memorandum daw mula sa aming law department upon verification, even from the, the heading and the signatures and the designation, definitely not coming from Comelec. Lagi po kaming nabibiktima sa ganyan. And that's why we are really asking our law enforcement authorities, most especially po the NBI, na matulungan kami upang mahanap yung mga taong involved. Kalimitan po, Your Honor, ay mag, or Your Honors, lalabas po kalimitan yung mga ganyan, yung malapit na eleksyon, lalo na sa may mga kaso na pending, uh, na naka-pending sa amin sa COMELEC para palabasin na kunwari yung mismong, uh, yung isang tao, isang kandidato ay disqualified. So it will take time before they can verify before the commission election whether indeed such a resolution exists or such a resolution is re was really promulgated by the COMELEC. Ang ginagawa po kaagad namin, Your, Honor na, or Your Honors na lang, ay pag may nagtanong sa amin, immediately we will issue clarification at the same time to the person involved and to the local COMELEC involved, we will issue the necessary notice that there was no such a resolution. So ito po particular sa makabayan mga party list, ano na po ang development dito? Yes po, nirefer po namin yan for investigation and uh, again, medyo naging maagap naman po uh, kung napansin niyo po your honors ang commission election we immediately uh, not only our spokesperson but this representation when he was still a commissioner we immediately uh, uh, made a statement and denounced the existence of such a fake resol uh, resolution uh, thank you uh, mr chair sana meron pa ring gawing na mas mas ano no iba pang mga dapat na gawin kaugnayan dito kasi hindi lang po makabayan yung affected uh, next question po uh, mr chair yung tungkol sa disenfranchisement nung mga voters particular po sa mga teachers lalong lalo na yung mga nagbabantay sa election electoral board parang very short too short po yung binibigay ninyong ano no yung binibigay natin na um, absentee local uh, absentee o oh, local absentee voting uh, minsan uh, nag magkakaiba yung instructions ng mga COMELEC during the briefing at saka at saka doon sa, sa sa instructions po ninyo so marami pong teachers na gustong bumoto noon na member ng electoral board na hindi po nakaboto so pwede po bang gawin natin yung katulad noon na kung saan assigned si teacher ay doon na rin siya pwedeng bumoto at, at national level ang binoboto po yata ng mga teachers. So, hindi po sila pinayagan eh noong nakaraang election. Ano po yung pwede natin gawin doon, Mr. Chair? Number one, your honors, we will commit that we will, uh, we will uh, make it longer for the electoral board members to vote. Malas lalawakan po natin so yung ating uh, period sa local absentee voting. Number two po, Your Honor, so long, pwedeng pwede po yung binabanggit po ninyo, basta po registered sila doon sa mismong municipality or uh, uh, district where they are registered. Uh, ah, doon po assigned, sa district? Halimbawa, kung sa, halimbawa, sa Quezon City, voter ang teacher sa District 2, pero nagbabantay siya ng election sa District 1. So yung 30 minutes na travel time going to District 2 ay hindi na pwede yon, um, Mr. Chair. Paano yon? We we will uh, we will allow that your honor. Within the same within the same district your honor? No, within uh, the same the, uh, outside uh, of the district. Oh, oh, oh. Ibang district po yun kasi si district um, teacher sa District 1, boboto siya sa District 2. Kulang naman yung 30 minutes para mag-travel to and fro siya doon sa kanyang precinct. In the next uh, drafting of our guidance, we will allow if so long as it is within the same city, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, thank you, um, um, Sir Chair. Uh, yung next po natin ay yung tungkol doon sa AES. Alam natin na maraming palpak sa Smartmatic. May plano na po ba doon ang COMELEC kaugnay nung automated pa rin, pero hindi na dapat na Smartmatic. Meron bang ganong mga pag-aaral na ginagawa ang COMELEC, Sir we, Chair? Um, your Honors, we are fully aware of these uh, issues being uh, thrown in, uh, in the race against our uh, service provider. And definitely all of these issues and concerns raised by stakeholders and uh, individuals will be seriously considered by COMELEC when, when COMELEC will uh, proceed with the computerization of election in 2025. But uh, we, will going, we are going to hold, of course, an open and free bidding and everybody will be entitled to participate. For the information of this body, the, one of the reform agenda of the chair is by January, we intend to conduct 
an election summit in which uh, all participants, all stakeholders will be there. We would like to have a roadmap so that we can plan of what to use in the 2025 election. Of course, subject to the legislation that uh, Congress will be passing, and at the same time, on the specifications and such other matters in relation to the automated election system. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Gusto ko lang erase dito no yung pinaplano natin o yung mga proposal natin like hybrid na election wherein uh, sa precinct level manual yung counting pero doon sa pagta-transmit ay automated. Dahil ano Mr. Chair, na matagal na pong tinakwil ng iba't ibang mga bansa yung fully automated dahil nawawala doon yung sovereign will ng mga mga elect Le, uh, mga electoral at mga electoral. Kaya baka pwede rin natin pag-aralan ano, yung ganong uh, uh, ganong pamamaraan. Ano po masasabi natin doon, Mr. Chair? Thank you very much, uh, Your Honors. In one case, the case of Harry Roque versus the Commission election, na-sustain po kasi yung automation of election. However, Your Honor, uh, that's the reason why the COMELEC was in full support of the proposal before. When, I, when your representation, when this representation was not yet a member of the Commission, the COMELEC was in full support of the, uh, for the conduct of the hybrid election in the Senate. Uh, I, I, we, I, we do not know uh, if there is a pending bill right now in Congress to, to conduct a hybrid uh, election likewise in 2025 or in the next succeeding election. Indeed, indeed, so long as so long as we are able to keep secret the ballots, but making the process public and open, then that we will definitely support. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, the Makabayan Black has a bill to that effect. Tinawag nga namin siyang Tama Bill. So that yung mga butante po, makaka makikita nila talaga na talagang nabibilang or nakakount yung kanilang boto. Kasi dun sa, sa present na automated system natin, yung AES, wala na eh. Pag ginanun sa machine, di na mo na alam kung nakount na siya doon sa, sa, sa canvassing. Tapos, um, syempre, may mga ano rin, problema rin tayo kapag nasira yung mga machine, Mr. Chair. So, si teacher na lang o yung teacher na lang yung nagpapasok. So, hindi natin nakikita yun. So, para maiwasan. So, Yun sana yung pinopropose namin, ano, yung tama bill. So yun lang po, uh, Mr. Chair, and thank you very much. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Maraming salamat, uh, Deputy Majority Leader Franz Castro, for your interpolation. We'll now proceed to the next interpolator. Uh, may we call on Deputy Majority Leader uh, Tony Pet Albano for his interpolation. Thank Please you, proceed. Mr. Chair, and thank you, Congressman Mendoza, for <coughs> yielding. I just have a few queries. It's actually par <coughs> parochial in nature, but uh, this has been a, a sorting uh, for this representation. In the first district of Isabella, and I'm sure it happens all over the Philippines, I have a perennial Louisans candidate named Mr. Sullivan, whom I've never seen. And not one single poster has been put there, and he was fined several times for not even uh, fulfilling his responsibility to give the election expense after the campaign. And yet, every year, his name is in the ballot, even if you've already declared him as a nuisance candidate. This is a big problem because, for one, your list is already too long. And it seems that the Comrade is dragging itself when it comes to declaring this particular person or particular persons in the whole Philippines as Louisans candidates already, it should be stricken out of the ballot so that it does not confuse the voters. May I ask Mr. Chair, the whole COMELEC in bank, what they do, they intend to do about this? Thank you very much, Your Honor. Well, in the first place, Section 69 of the Omnibus Election Code was already declared constitutional by the Supreme Court in the case of Pamatong versus Comelec and likewise reiterated in the case of Martinez versus the Commission election. But unfortunately, of course, despite the presence of Section 69, which is nuisance candidacies, there are still many nuisance candidates that uh, have been filing their candidacies. What is our solution? Last week, Your Honors, this representation that uh, your chairman had uh, uh, called for a meeting of all uh, uh, bodies within the Commission election involved in adjudication. And we said that if the filing of can the candidacies will be by October, for example, of 2024, 
then we will have to resolve all uh, nuisance cases, not only in the division level, but up to the uh, end bank level up to December of the same year. Ang problema po, ang dahilan po ay dahil napapansin natin na kami rin naman po ang namumoblema kapag kami mga nuisance na nakatakbo. And then after makatakbo ng nuisance, problema po after may proclaim at nagkakaroon ng issue tungkol sa kung kanino mabibigay yung boto po ng nuisance. So, we will commit, Your Honor, that we will expedite, we will resolve the same, uh, these cases of nuisance within the same year that the petitions were filed. So at the same time, Your Honors, maybe Congress can now consider there was a, a proposed bill before in the Senate to criminalize um, the filing of nuisance candidacies. So may proposal po that no, is, Your Honor. The problem honorable. is that this was decriminalized, Mr. Chair, before. Uh, this, uh, especially uh, with the expense to the expense uh, expenditure. Am I correct? Expenditure, Your, your Honor. Before, it was criminal in nature for you not to uh, uh, file your expenses for election returns or for uh, uh, expenses during the elections. This was this decriminalized, if I understand by uh, 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 that the law has uh, passed. Am I about you? Non-filing, yes, Your Honor. Non-filing of the the source. Yes, the source. Non-filing of the source for two consecutive elections you will be perpetually disqualified, Your Honor. But it seems that this Mr. Solomon has had managed to do it again in my district. And I don't understand that there are a lot of congressmen complaining of the same. So you are right, Mr. Chair, that you need to resolve this as soon as possible so this doesn't become a problem. And Mr. Chair, I am not accusing any Comelec officials here, but the, uh, despite this, I hear a lot of rumors I hear a lot of complaints from my fellow congressmen that the delay of such promulgation actually is uh, natin, a reason for others to ask for dispensation or certain personal alam na, kung ano yung sinasabi. So uh, I, I would suggest that you really implement this uh, particular measure to take away once and for all these problems of having the nuisance candidates, uh, especially kung recurring, yung tao na katulad dito si Mr. Sullivan. Thank you very much, Your Honor. October, if the, if the filing is October, we will resolve all, we will resolve all nuisance petition for declaration of nuisance before the end of December of the same year when the filing was done. Thank you, Mr. Chair, but I would like to just manifest that if this happens again in the next election when I run, that Mr. Sullivan's budget uh, name is, appears there, I will hold your budget for the next uh, coming election. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Deputy Majority Leader Tony Pet Albano, for your interpolation. We'll now proceed to the next interpolator from uh, Congressman Edsel Lagman. Uh, please proceed, Congressman Lagman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. May we know from the COMELEC uh, Chairman, Chairman Garcia, for the record, whether the COMELEC is fully prepared to conduct the December 2022 Barangay and SK elections. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair, your honors. For the record, the COMELEC is fully prepared to conduct the election on December 5. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, may we also know from the COMELEC whether uh, the 8.4 billion appropriation is fully sufficient for the conduct of the Barangay and SK elections in December 2022? Uh, Mr. Chair, your honors, the 8.441 billion pesos is enough to finance the 2022 Barangay and SK elections. However, if we postpone the Barangay elections to May 2023, there will be an additional amount of about 9 billion. And if we postpone it to December 2023, there will be an additional amount of more or less 10 billion in addition to the continuing appropriation of 7.4 billion. Is that correct? 
Mr. Chair, Your Honors, that is correct. But uh, for purposes of clarification, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honors, it's 17 billion for me, less um, 7.5 billion for December, 18 billion less 7.5 billion pesos. Uh, that's correct. Now, Mr. Chairman, may we also know whether the amount already comprehensive release to the COMELEC for the 2022 December elections uh, could still be uh, taken back by the executive in order to support the economic recovery program. Mr. Chair, Your Honours, with all due respect, they cannot. They cannot. Because the COMELEC has fiscal autonomy under the Constitution. What is released to you cannot be taken back. It can be part of a continuum of repression. Is that correct? That is perfectly correct, Your Honor. So in other words, the reason that, the, that there should be postponement in order that the amount can be used for the recovery program is not correct. Based on the premises, uh, as mentioned, that is correct, Your Honor. Mm. Under the Constitution, I think it's Section 8 of Article 10, the term of office of barangay officials, the term of office of barangay officials, shall be determined by law. Is that correct? That is correct, Your Honor. And uh, this mandate is a one-time mandate. Is that correct? Uh, Your Honor, that may be the subject of a legal interpretation. Mm -hmm. uh, it is my position that it's a one-time uh, uh, mandate. Once exercised, it is already uh, exercised by Congress, and there is no provision for a continuing mandate under Section 8 of Article 10. Now, there is no budget for the Barangay and SK elections in 2023. That is right, Your Honor, as proposed and as contained in the President's mm -hmm. budget. And uh, you were present this morning, Mr. Chairman, when, we, when the Committee on Appropriation approved the Consulate Bill under Section uh, 4 on appropriation, there is no fixed amount appropriated for the barangay and SK election if they are postponed. Is that yes, correct? yes, that is correct, Mr. Chair, Your Honours, and as correctly pointed out by the Honourable Congressman Lagman. Now, if there is no appropriation in the 2023 budget, of the COMELEC for the contact of barangay and SK elections, and there is no specific amount appropriated in the uh, postponement of the barangay elections, then the barangay elections could be imperiled because of an absence of an appropriate appropriation because the 7.4 billion continuing appropriation would not be sufficient to conduct the elections. 7.4 billion, the 8.44 uh, uh, billion is only for December of 2022. Uh, okay, so uh, this barangay elections be postponed to 2023, either in May or December, would be imperial if there is no appropriate or adequate appropriation. Is that correct? Mr. Chair, Your Honors, no budget would mean no. Uh, budget for the COMELEC to spend yeah. for the conduct of that electoral exercise. Now, let me go to another uh, topic. Uh, since we embark on the automated elections, has there been any electoral protests which has prospered based on fraudulent uh, generation of election results? Since 2010, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honours, there was not a single election protest, at least filed before the commissioner election or even filed before other electoral tribunals such as the House of Representatives Electoral Tribunal or even the Senate Electoral Tribunal or even in the Presidential Electoral Tribunal that uh, prospered in favor of the protestant even as far as this representation is concerned as a practitioner before. What is the import? of the absence of such uh, 
electoral protest prospering. Yeah, um, at this point, Your Honor, it would uh, mean that the machines are really fun uh, uh, functioning properly, that the mach machines are really counting properly. All throughout the different elections, Your Honor, the, the average of accuracy is almost 99.3 percent, average accuracy. In the last election, it's 99.7 percent accurate, Your Honor. The 0.03 percent is only because the voter did not shade properly the ballots. Maybe po yung balota tuldok lang, kaya po hindi nabilang ng machine. But then, in the, using the, sa naked eye, kitang kita po yon. So meaning to say, with all due respect to all those who are saying that the machines are not functioning properly, that indeed the machines are accurate. Thank you for that answer, Mr. Chairman. And uh, last question. I heard that you are in favor of a hybrid election, wherein there would be more dynamic participation of the people, the electorate, in watching the uh, counting of the ballots. So it could be manual counting, but the transmission of the results could be electronic. Is that correct? Ye yes, as envisioned by the Senate when, they, when it passed the bill for the hybrid system of election. For the record, uh, Mr. Chairman, I am also in favor of a hybrid election. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Kong Edsel, for your interpolation. Uh, let's proceed uh, for the next interpolator. May we call on uh, Congressman uh, Jolo Rebilia for his interpolation. Please proceed, uh, Congressman. Good morning, Rebilia. Mr. Chair. Good morning. Esteemed members of this committee, Comelec Chairperson uh, George Garcia and the rest of the Comelec. My first question is, what is the status of the modernization program of the Comelec? And not just in terms of our technolo technological upgrades to safeguard data stored by the Comelec, but also with regards having a new building to house such agency and the data. Ano po yung status po nito? And what is the latest updates of proposed nine-story building within the two-hectare site in Pasay City. Maraming salamat po, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, sa napakagandang katanungan. Uh, when we initially proposed the budget for the, the agency, we asked the DBM for 10 billion pesos. However, the DBM reduced the budget as proposed from 10 billion to 4.6 billion. And fortunately for the, the agency, for the commission, I, uh, when the new administration came, they added additional 500 million dito po sa aming proposed, uh, sa aming uh, budget and that's why the President's budget will contain 5.221 billion for the Commission. Tama po kayo Mr. Chair na binigyan po kami ng 500 million dahil gusto po namin magpatayo ng sarili namin bahay, sarili namin building. For the information of uh, the members, the good members of the, the, uh, the body, the Committee on Appropriation, we are actually leasing sa Palacio del Gobernador and such other office spaces around the Palacio del Gobernador, we are spending for one year 159 billion, uh, million pesos for lease alone. At uh, pag po may mga special events kami, katulad po ng filing ng candidacy, katulad po ng canvassing sa national, sa senators and party list, kami po ay laging nangungupahan sa PICC at yung mga malalapit na ha, hotels. Kahit po pag yung aming random manual audit, kami po'y nangungupahan din sa mga hotels. Yung mga major activities namin, lagi po kaming nangungupahan. At dahil po dyan, siguro naman po that yung urgent need for us to have a building ay naandun po. Ang Commission on Audit, Mr. Chair, ang Civil Service Commission, ang Office of the Ombudsman, ang Commission on Human Rights, may sarili-sarili po silang building. Ang Commission on Elections, nabanggit po ni Congressman Edsel Lagman, isang constitutional body, kami po'y nangungupahan hanggang sa kasalukuyan. Hindi po ba naman siguro marapat lang na magkaroon din kami ng sariling building. It will take po several years. Hindi po naman kami nangihingi ng isang taon lang. It may be four years, five years, eight years, or ten years. The most important thing is we're able to start. Meron po kaming property, more than two hectares, less than three, dyan po sa, hara, sa, may, sa may makapagal. Amin po yon in our name. So why can't we not construct our own building? In terms of investment, iba po ang mag-invest ka sa sarili mong bahay. 
and that we are going to do and that we are going to pursue, of course, with the able help of our Congress. Mr. Chair, we are one with you. At nakikiisa po kami sa inyo. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Mr. Chair. Alam, alam din naman po kasi natin, no? parang recently nagkaroon din po ng sunog sa Palaso El Gobernador. So, naniniwala po kami na talagang kinakailangan nito. And at the same time, my second question is, given the practicality of renting machines during the conduct of elections, how much money will we actually save by doing this instead of buying new machines? Kagaya po ng nasagot niyo sa tanong ni Deputy Majority Leader Pat. Malaki po, Your Honor, in terms of uh, savings simply because pag po tayo ay bumili ng makina, Technology po kasi yan, Your Honors, Mr. Chair. At dahil technology, parang cellphone, ilang, ilang panahon lang, from, from iPhone 11, nag-12, nag-13, ngayon may 40 na. In six months uh, period lang po nagbabago ang technology. Pag bumili po tayo ng makina, we are going to warehouse it. Magbumangupahan na naman po kami ng warehouse. We are going to maintain it. Magbabayad po tayo sa maintenance. Samantalang kung lease po yan, kung lease, without preempting the action of the end bank because that will be discussed po ng Commission and Bank. Pag lease po yan, siyempre po siguradong bago ang kanina ipapalis sa amin, di naman po kami kapapayag na luma yung paparenta sa atin. Number two, sila po magbabayad ng warehouse, sila rin po magbabayad ng maintenance and therefore napakalaking katipiran po on the part of the Commission election. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The First District of Cavite manifests its support the Commission on Elections, led by Chairperson George Irwin Garcia, a seasoned lawyer known for his legal expertise, especially in the field of election law. We hope to work with Gomelec and assist them in their constitutional mandate to enforce and administer all laws and regulations relative to the conduct of elections, as the right to vote holds an equal responsibility that everyone entitled to vote should exercise such right. For the exercise of the right to vote is truly one of the acts that truly shows the democracy of our country. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Maraming salamat, Congressman Jolo. We will proceed now. We will proceed now with the next interpolator from the majority again. Uh, Representative Jaime Presnedi. Presnedi. Uh, nasa Zoom ba si Congressman Presnedi? Uh, Nakamute po kayo, uh, Congressman. Nakamute. Nakamute po kayo. Okay, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, first, I would like to congratulate uh, Chairman uh, Garcia for his appointment as uh, uh, Chairman of uh, the Commission on Election. We all know that uh, uh, Chairman Garcia is one of the leading in, uh, election lawyer in the country and his wealth of uh, experience will definitely contribute in the uh, reforms that he intends to do in Comelec. Anyway, congratulations, uh, Chairman Garcia. Uh, my concern, uh, Mr. Chair, Mr. Chairman, is about the resolutions of the Comele of the Supreme Court last March, dated March 29, 2002, 2022. Uh, this is uh, the resolution regarding uh, persons deprived of liberty. Uh, Mr. Chair, Mr. Chairman, uh, in 2013, uh, that was the time it was implemented wherein a PDL or person deprived of liberty were allowed to vote even to the local officials. However, there was a restraining order issued by the Supreme Court uh, filed by Attorney Aguinaldo. So in 2016, 2019, and 2022, uh, the same, uh, this uh, PDL or person deprived of liberty uh, were temporarily uh, disallowed to vote for local candidates. However, uh, this March 29, 2022, 
the Supreme Court lifted this restraining order and allowed uh, uh, this uh, person deprived of liberty uh, to vote even to the barangay officials, local officials. My concern, uh, Mr. Chairman, is uh, especially in Montilupa. Uh, in Montilupa, we have per election registrar around 5,000 PDL will be allowed to uh, vote come election. I think especially for barangay officials, this will affect the result of the election. I don't think uh, we can expect uh, an honest election uh, with uh, those persons deprived of liberty allowing to vote, considering that they are under the protections of those uh, uh, persons uh, in authority. Uh, may we uh, know the thoughts of Chairman Garcia about these resolutions of the Supreme Court? Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honours. Indeed, we hailed, uh, we hailed the action of the Supreme Court in lifting the temporary restraining order na na in 2000 and, uh, 2013 na kung saan uh, hindi po pinaboto sa local, uh, sa local election ang mga PDLs, persons deprived of liberties. But, 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 but just the same, uh, Your Honours, these persons deprived of liberties are still entitled under our Constitution, under Article 5, on the right of suffrage, to still cast their votes. In fact, in 2000, tama po yung point out po, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honours, in 2016 up to 2022, hindi po sila pinaboto for local positions. And since the Supreme Court already lifted the TRO, then it's a go signal, Your Honours, on the part of the Commission of Election, regardless of any political consideration or political issues to allow these people to vote because that is our constitutional duty. We have to allow them to vote and we have an existing resolution that will allow these uh, persons deprived of liberties to vote. Wag po kayo mag your honors. The COMELEC will do everything that uh, all of these, uh, your concerns will be seriously uh, taken care of by the Commission and likewise we will protect the PDLs and uh, assure their security so that they will not be influenced by uh, politicians, especially local politicians. Sa kung sa Muntinlupa po, Your Honours, we have 5,000 in the entire country. We have 65,000 persons deprived of liberties. So again, we will comply with our constitutional mandate to allow everyone to vote. We will not uh, disenfranchise anybody because that is what the Supreme Court uh, mandated us to do when it lifted the TRO. Your concerns, uh, Mr. Chair, is seriously no are seriously noted by the Commission. We will do everything. We will all we will uh, put in place all procedure to ensure that your fears and concerns will not materialize. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair, Mr. Chairman, uh, earlier this morning uh, in the uh, operation committee uh, on uh, regarding the uh, suspension or the uh, ex uh, deferment of elections of Parangay and SK. Uh, you mentioned earlier about the people to vote wisely. Uh, do you think, Mr. Chairman, that uh, these uh, people deprived of liberty can vote honestly, considering that they do not know the local candidates? We will definitely conduct, uh, Your Honours, Mr. Chair, a massive information campaign to all the facilities where the persons deprived of liberties are presently held. Nasa amin po yon, obligation po ng Commission Election na ipa abot sa ating pong mga kababayan na nakakulong sa kasalukuyan sino ang mga kandidato at uh, na yung mga kandidatong ito ay mga qualified base sa ating pagsusuri base po sa local government code at iba pang umiiral na patakaran. Doon po sa uh, katanungan nyo po your honors um, uh, with all due respect ay uh, the commission 
will refrain from um, making other explanation or comment because that will now intrude into a purely political matter, Your Honor. Okay, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chair, uh, I would like to trust the words of uh, Chairman Garcia on his commitment uh, to conduct uh, uh, ex uh, exhaustive uh, information about the candidates, especially in the local uh, elections, uh, local candidates and uh, barangay candidates uh, for the person deprived of liberty uh, to have uh, to uh, vote wisely uh, to these candidates. Uh, thank you, and that's all, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Congress Nedi. We'll proceed. Uh, the next interpolator will, will be uh, Vice Chair Raul Bungulan. Bungalon, sorry. I'm sorry. Is that corrected? Thank you, uh, Mr. Proceed. Chair. Pangadang uh, umaga po sa Comelec and uh, congratulations po uh, kay Chairman at uh, the confirm na po ng uh, Commission on Appointments. Fellow colleagues, good morning. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I just would like to uh, be enlightened as regards the uh, Comelec uh, resolution that uh, was uh, issued during the campaign period and uh, this seems to be a confusion regarding the size limitation and the uh, pronouncement of the Supreme Court in the case of uh, Diocese of Bacolod versus Comelec. Uh, napansin po kasi namin, uh, Mr. Chairman, na uh, nagkakaroon po ng confusion as to the uh, obser uh, pag-observe ng uh, tamang uh, size limitation po when it comes to the uh, election para pernalias. Can we just be enlightened, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, regarding this? Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. In the case of Diocese of Bacolod versus the Commission on Election, the Supreme Court was so emphatic that the sizes of, uh, that, that, that the right of, the, of a voter or individuals to put uh, materials is a right guaranteed by the Constitution under the freedom of expression. And this is more particularly true, Your Honors, when it comes to private properties. That's why the Comelec was of strong belief and, have, and uh, of the position in the 2022 elections that when it comes to private properties, we will definitely respect all election parapernalia placed in private properties. And there will be no size limitation as far as private properties are concerned. The Supreme Court even said, the bigger, the better, because that is what democracy is all about. That is guaranteed by the freedom of expression. The size limitation is applicable only, Your Honors, as far as uh, in uh, private properties, uh, public, pro public places are concerned. It's definitely, the eight and a half by, by 13 and and such other size limitations will be applicable in public places, but not in private properties. Thank, thank you uh, for that uh, well uh, explanation from the chairman of the Comelec. At this point, Mr. Chairman, I would like to manifest as your vice chairperson in the House Committee on Appropriations and as one of the representatives of a cubicle party list, together with our chairman, the Honorable Zaldico, I pronounce my commitment as a co-sponsor for the budget of the Comelec for the fiscal year 2023. And at this point, Mr. Chairman, may I be allowed the, uh, to read the interpolation of the Honorable Jose Bong Tevez, Jr. as to the budget briefing of the Commission on Elections. Uh, please proceed, uh, Vice Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairperson, Comelec Chairperson George Garcia, and the entire Comelec family, Good morning to all of you. This representation would like to express my 100% support to the proposed budget of the Commission on Elections and if it pleases the majority of this August body to increase its budget in order to effect the reforms in the Commission. With this, I concur with the proposal of the Commission on Elections for the construction of the new Comelec building the current Comelec main office is located in the Palacio del Gobernador, was gutted by fire last week, and several offices of the, commissions, of the commission were damaged. Also, the Comelec only leases from the Intramuros administration for the use of its office spaces 
in the Palacio del Gobernador building in Entramuros, Manila. It is high time for the Commission on Elections, a constitutional body, to acquire its own building and office space. My next suggestion is for the modernization and advancement of the outdated ballot boxes and or vote counting machines in order to strengthen its security features and further uphold the transparency and integrity of our election process. With the recently confirmed Chairperson Garcia at the helm of the Commission on Elections, this representation is certain that the constitutional body will remain an independent institution and free from any influence and will continue to introduce developments for the benefit of the electorate in the name of democracy. Thank you and mabuhay po kayo. Signed, Honorable Jose Bong Tebes Jr., Deputy Majority Leader, Representative, TGP Party List. That's all, Mr. Chair, and thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Vice Chair Bongalon. Uh, for the next interpolator, may we call on uh, Congressman Jervil Luistro. Uh, are you present in the, uh, in the Zoom? Please proceed with your interpolation, Congressman Luistro. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Good morning. Yes, and good morning to all our honorable commissioners of the COMELEC most especially to our newly confirmed uh, chairman of the Commission on Elections, the Honorable Garcia. Uh, for my interpolations, Mr. Chair, there are allegations that in spite of the public resolution directing the cleansing of permanent records of voters to remove and exclude the names of deceased, and those with double and multiple registrations, their names still appeared in the permanent list and were able to cast their votes in the last May 2022 elections. May we know the thoughts of our honorable chairman on how to address these concerns. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair, your honors. As far as the cleansing of the list of voters, it's a continuing process on the part of the Commission election. But I would like to explain so that it will be very, very clear to all of us. Bakit po ba yung mga patay hanggang sa kasalukuy yung mga pangalan nila ay naanjan? We can easily remove yung mga patay, yung mga deceased uh, individuals po, doon sa mga nakatira po sa bawat bayan. Pag po si A na matay sa bayan na yan, therefore, the, elect, the, the, the civil register of that municipality is mandated under Republic Act 8189 to submit per quarter the list of the deceased individuals who died in that particular place. Unfortunately, Your Honors, our problem really is, what if A, a resident of, the municip of this municipality, will die in another place? The problem is the civil registrar of that place will definitely not issue a certification addressed to the local COMELEC that A died in, in the municipality, in his municipality, in another municipality. So, ang problem po namin, Your Honors, is yung law, yung Republic of 8189, provides only for the submission by the local civil registrar of those who died in that area of jurisdiction. So, ang ginawa po ng COMELEC ay nakiusap po kami sa, sa civil registrar general na kung pe pwede, ay isubmit na lang sa amin sa COMELEC yung lahat ng namatay sa buong Pilipinas on a per quarterly basis so that kami na lang po ang magdi-distribute sa iba't ibang local COMELEC namin. Kami na lang po magsasabi, pakitanggal nyo to dahil namatay na, namatay siya outside of the, the place where he is a res resident of. Unfortunately po, we were informed by the Civil Register General that we have to pay para of, pa, an amount of 5 pesos per every namatay. So, pedyo, pag madami-dami pong namatay, malaki-laki po rin yung babayaran ng COMELEC para sa certification na namatay po ito. Kasi po may binabayaran din po sila. And that is the reason why, Your Honors, that will require legislation with all due respect po. Kakailanganin po ng legislation upang libre po namin makuha yung listahang iyon sa, re sa Civil Registrar General. So, kahit po nakikiusap kami, hindi po talaga nila pwedeng ibigay ng libre sa amin 
And so sabi namin, we will just push for legislation so that we can easily access and get the list of all the dead individuals nationwide so that we will be the one to remove this, um, uh, these names through our local election officers. For your information also, Your Honors, the COMELEC has this so-called AFIS, Automated Fingerprint Identification System. This is a program which the COMELEC uh, developed. Yung program pong ito, we can easily, for your information po, we can easily find out whether a voter is a double registrant or a multiple registrant. Maaari pong hindi po nalalaman ng lahat. We are always requiring on a quarterly basis our election officers to remove the names of these individuals subject to the approval of the Election Registration Board as mandated by Republic Act 8189 because these registrants are multiple registrants. Of course, you cannot remove all the names. Hindi naman po pwedeng tanggalin. Ang tatanggalin lang po talaga ay yung mismong sec, yung subsequent registration aside from the original registration without prejudice to these individuals facing election offense cases. So, may continuing process po kami ng, ng cleansing. Yung pong uh, deactivation under the law, under Republic Act 8189 also, and if you fail to vote in two consecutive elections, your names will be removed from the list. If you wanted to be reinstated, then you will have to file later on uh, a petition for reactivation filed before the Election Registration Board. So, uh, with all due respect po, Your Honors, patuloy po yung paglilinis namin. Wag, wag po kayo mag-alala. The, the, the most important document, of course, other than the ballot in an election, will always be the list of voters. And that is also the reason why under the same Republic Act 8189, there is a period by which political parties, candidates, stakeholders, everybody else can inquire into the book of voters. You know, open po namin yon before namin saraduhan yung libro. And uh, so, iniingan yun po namin ng lahat na sana itake yung opportunity na yon for them to be able to be there and observe and pinpoint to the Election Registration Board the names of individuals that they wanted to, re uh, to be removed. And finally po, ang isang votante, once na nakaboto na po, ay hindi namin basa-basa pwedeng tanggalin because the right to vote comes in. It's a constitutional right. It is now judicial in character. It's no longer administrative. The proper solution really is to file a petition for exclusion before the Municipal Trial Court. Thank you very much, Your Honors. Uh, with respect, Mr. Chair, to the manifestation of the Honorable Chairman, may I manifest my interest to work with the team of the COMELEC or perhaps with the Committee on Suffrage to be able to come up with a proper bill or legislative measure which will finally address the cleansing of our permanent list of voters from names of deceased, double, and multiple registrants, Mr. Chair. And earlier, Mr. Chair, our Honorable Chairman likewise mentioned about the finger scanner, the biometrics. May we be enlightened if it is the intention of the COMELEC to reimpose the same for the purpose of the next barangay election? Mr. Chair? Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honors. For the barangay election, we will. St uh, what we're going to do is still the one that we, we had been doing for the last several elections. Uh, we, will have, we, will, we will have our own... Uh, yung nakaraang 2022 po, meron tayong voters verification table. Napaka-successful po nun. Alam po nyo, uh, lahat ng mga potante po natin, yung mga constituents nyo po, pumunta lahat sa table na yon at nagtatanong, saan ba ako registered? Aside from that, we have the precinct finder. And aside from that, we have the list of voters outside of the precinct posted on the walls. And aside from that, we have the Election Day Computerized Voters. It's the EDCBL, where you can see your pictures, you can see the, sam the sample of your signature, and then where you sign, and where the, the teachers will write your, your uh, uh, the serial number of the ballots. So yun palang, yun palang din po. Yung pong pagkakaroon ng fingerprint, yung uh, para, para, para ma-verify, uh, nagkaroon po tayo ng pilot test before. And in the future, Your Honor, we, we will uh, again continue to study the possibility of, of uh, putting in place machines whereby pagpasok nyo po para pumapasok sa bawat opisina, nagpapabiometrics lang. But that is based on the condition that the list of voters is so clean. 
We will undertake first, on the part of the Commission, the cleansing of the list of voters. We will have to do that first. Because po, kahit magbiometrics po tayo, pagkatapos naman po ay hindi rin malinis ang listahan ng botante o may mga botante na nakakaligtas, then the machines will not be able to correct what can be corrected by the human beings. So we will first uh, make the proper cleansing, humanly possible, and then after that, we will proceed to what the Honorable Congresswoman is suggesting. We will proceed with the biometrics technology for purposes of voting. Uh, thank you for the positive response to that concern, Mr. Chair. And of course, I am encouraging the support of our, our fellow members of the 19th Congress so that the desired thorough cleansing of the permanent list of voters may be achieved by the Commission on Elections. And for my last concern, I acknowledge the statement earlier of our Honorable Chairman about the accuracy of the VCM or vote counting machine in as far as the counting of the votes cast are concerned. May we know the thoughts of the Kwamelec with respect this time to vote buying or no vote buying as this likewise disenfranchise our voters, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair, Your Honors. Section 261A of the Omnibus Election Code defined what is vote buying. But unfortunately, our Omnibus Election Code was circa 1985. We have not yet amended or have not yet revised the Omnibus Election Code. There, was a pending, there is a pending bill in the House of Representatives in your Congress, in our Congress, Your Honor, that uh, imposes additional or increased penalty for those who are engaged in vote buying. We actually support such kind of initiative, but however, we are of the belief that aside from increasing the penalty for those who will be found guilty of vote buying, maybe it's high time that we likewise redefine what is the meaning of vote buying. Ibig sabihin po, yung vote buying noong 1985 ay maaaring hindi nakasophisticated sa vote, bu vote buying ng kasalukuyang panahon. And ibig sabihin po, yung vote buying sa kasalukuyang panahon ay maaaring hindi na makover ng definition ng 261A ng Omnibus Election Code. And therefore, po, it may be used by certain candidates and unscrupulous individuals in getting away with that felony, in that, with that offense. Kasi nga po, may loophole na ang batas. Such as, for example, vote buying using your cell phone. Or such as, for example, using Gcash or Paymaya or such other modes of of, of transferring funds. So in that case, ang tanong po ba, yung po ba ay pwede makover doon po sa mismong uh, definition natin sa 261A. Next, yung pong mga paggastos ng ilan nating mga local officials, manghihingi po na, wala po exception sa, sa, sa social services. Doon pa lang din po meron po yung loophole. Kasi how do you now distinguish social, purely social services and purely so, vote buying? namimigay po ng mga tulong, lalo pandemic response, and that is still a function of the local government under 7160, local, local government code. But technically, are we now considering that as likewise vote buying? So medyo may problem po tayo doon sa bagay na yon. Sample lang ko pa rin po kayo ng kailangan na natin ng legislation. Bowler, T-shirt, cups, wala po yan sa law. So kung namigay po ba si A, na kandidato na mga candy, cups, konting pagkain, pang inum lang ng tubig, mineral water, is that already vote buying? We should properly now define what is the meaning of vote buying. Bakit wala na po prosecute? Simply because, it's not because maybe, the, maybe, maybe to a certain extent may fault din ng konti ang COMELEC, but to a certain extent because of the lack of evidence. Because nobody would like to pursue vote buying as an election offense. Kasi po, pagpapal sa amin, iimbestigahan namin, probable cause, papal namin sa korte, magwi-widor yung complainant, walang ebidensya, walang mag-testify, it will surely be dismissed by the courts. Thank you very much, Your Honors. Indeed, Mr. Chair, this representation is overwhelmed by the expertise and wisdom of our Honorable Chairman of the Comelec. And it will definitely be an honor to become part of the vision or perhaps the objective of our honorable chairman towards uh, redefining these offenses under the omnibus election code and finally mr chair let me express my undivided support 
to the budget of COMELEC, including to all its commissioners and, of course, our chairman. Please count me in, honorable chairman, among the representatives who will support the budget and even all its possible increases. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Maraming salamat, uh, Congresswoman Gerbil Castro, for your interpolation. Before we proceed, uh, the Chair would like to add on the comment uh, raised by Congresswoman Castro regarding yung mga patay no, sa registration of voters na nandun pa sa list of voters. I uh, just encountered this one no, uh, from a personal experience. Uh, some several registrars in different municipalities is raising the violation of Data Privacy Act. Ayaw nila ibigay yung uh, listahan ng mga patay because they would violate Data Privacy Act. So how, how do we, uh, how do we, uh, no, uh, what's your take on this, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Chairman Garcia? The Honorable, uh, Mr. Chair, the Honorable Congressman Ed Selagman was the author of Republic Act 8189. It was really the intention of that law to compel all civil registrars nationwide to submit to COMELEC. The pangalan lang naman po yung isasabit sa amin ng mga namatay at kung kailan namatay. I don't think that there is a violation of data privacy in that respect. So, uh, uh, with all due respect to our civil registrars, unfortunately, their argument cannot stand in court. Thank you very much, Chair. But we need maybe uh, a memorandum to, to enforce that, uh, no? Uh, to remind them that uh, there's no violation with data privacy. Akos, yun po ang sinasabi nila. We had difficulty you know, asking for the list of the you know, dead, uh, people who are dead in their municipalities. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Chair, this representation will be the guest speaker of, the, of all the civil registrars in their General Assembly this coming uh, uh, Saturday, and I will definitely emphasize that, and we will issue the corresponding uh, notice and uh, reminder for them to issue to us. And in the first place, Your Honor, the civil registrars are members of the Election Registration Board, the ERB, and surely they will be, they are the ones approving or disapproving the application or removing the names. So they cannot really miss submitting to local COMELEC the list of those who died on a quarterly basis. Uh, thank you very much for that clarification, you, uh, Chairman Garcia. So. Let's proceed po. Uh, the next interpolator will be Vice Chair uh, Joseph Jojo Lara. Congressman Lara, are you in the Zoom? Yeah, please proceed. Please proceed, Congressman Lara. Your, please unmute. We cannot hear you. Hindi po namin kayo marinig. Mayroon at ang problema sa microphone po niyo, Kong Lara. Mr. Chair. Ah, yeah. Okay. Proceed. Please proceed. Uh, maraming salamat po, Mr. Chair. Naimbagabigat ka niya tayo, amin na po. Good morning po sa ating lahat. Please allow me to take this opportunity to express my gratitude to the Kongalek. Now headed by our Chairman, the Honorable Erwin George Garcia, for all your hard work in securing the, the success of the recently concluded national and local elections. At this point, po, allow me to congratulate Chairman George Garcia for the confirmation of his appointment. Mr. Chair, I would uh, just like to manifest my request to Paul Melek, of course, to our Honorable, Honorable Commissioners and Chairman Garcia, for your support to legislative measures that will strengthen policies and laws against unlawful disbursement, releases, and uh, expenditures of public, public funds and use of government funds for distribution of cash and other forms of assistance to registered voters during election period. Tulad po na nangyari sa amin, sa aming probinsya sa Cagayan, at uh, ako po uh, uh, natutuwa nung nakikinig kanina kay, kay Chairman George no, na kailangan ng magkaroon ng amend, uh, amendment no, sa batas na naukol po dito 
no nang dahil uh, ang nangyari po sa amin na uh, kalamak po ang boat buying gamit po ang pera ng gobyerno. Ito po nung nakaraang election, lahat ng social services and programs ng provincial government supposedly ng dalawang taon without the required exemption from the COMELEC were disbursed and released during the election period. Ang worst po nito, several days before election day. The provincial governor, Manuel Mamba, reportedly withdrew from the coffers of the provincial government of Cagayan. Gargantuan amounts of public funds commingled from various funds, savings, donations, trust funds, and others without the needed appropriations from the Sangguniyan Panlalawigan, without the needed exemptions from Comelec, and despite a TRO, Temporary Restraining Order, issued by a competent court, proceeded to illegally distribute 1,000 pesos to every registered voter all over the province. Although, Mr. Chair, I have filed House Resolution number 146 on this, and we will discuss this at an appropriate time in the committee. I would just like to request the support and needed collaboration of the COMELEC on this so we can pass legislation that will strengthen implementations of these laws and policies, especially on provisions of the Omnibus Election Code and permanent COMELEC resolutions expressly prohibiting the disbursements, release, and expenditures of public funds without the required exemption of the COMELEC with the end view of pursuing legal remedies against offend offending public officials to prevent repetitions of these highly unlawful practices in the future. With that said, Mr. Chair, I would like to express my full support to the approval of the 2023 budget of the Commission. Rest assured, Chairman Garcia and the rest of the Comelec family of my support to all programs of the Commission. Maraming salamat, Mr. Chair. Agyaman na po. Diyos ti Agnina, mabalo po sa ating lahat. Sal Maraming salamat, uh, Kong Jojo, for your interpolation. Uh, let's proceed. Ay, sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Chairman Garcia? Uh, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, yeah. 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 Thank you, uh, Congressman uh, Lara. Uh, Chairman Garcia, do you have any response? Uh, I... Good. Definitely, Your Honor, we will, we will uh, strengthen our ability to monitor uh, expenditure of uh, so, uh, public funds, especially on social services. Yun nga po yung madaming problema. And uh, <clears throat> yours truly being the commission in charge for the request for exemption for social ser services, expenditure, madami po kami dininay nung nakaraan, alam po ng mga ibang uh, kagalang-galang na miyembro po ng ating komite. Ang dami po namin dininay ng mga request noon for exemption. Kaya lang po, madami rin pong hindi humingi sa amin ng exemption. And that's why, for the record, lahat po ng humingi, hindi humingi sa amin ng exemption, eh therefore, nag-violate po ng Omnibus Election Code. Because they have to secure the necessary exemption, parang gun ban, sa amin. Otherwise, they, can be, uh, they will be facing election offense cases punishable by three to six years imprisonment. Maraming salamat, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, Chairman uh, Garcia, maraming salamat po sa assurance ninyo kasi po ako po yung naniniwala na ang kagustuhan talaga ng uh, karamihan sa atin ng pamamayan tuwing election po ang mananaig. Uh, katulad ng po ng nabanggit nyo kanina no, na maraming paglabag tungkol dun sa provision po no, na uh, kailangan humingi ng exemption from the COMELEC Ang worst po ay kung hindi nga po ito humingi at itinuloy po ang paglabag doon sa provision na yan. So once again po, uh, Mr. Chair, no, ito naman po ay uh, naisa lang po bilang uh, House Resolution Number 146. Alam po, tatalakayin din namin ito ni na Chairman uh, Garcia and the rest of the uh, commissioners. No, kung mamarapatin po, no, uh, i-reiterate ko lang 
na sana ito po ang mga ganitong mga pangyayari. Sabi nga natin kanina, yung mga uh, walang maliit na bagay po sa panahon ng, ng eleksyon, lahat po ng paglabag ay malaki. No? Na dahil ako po ay naniniwala na maaaring ito ay uh, magiging, uh, magiging impluensya na mabago ang kagustuhan ng ating mamamayan. No, ang worst po ng nangyari nga po, ito sa kaalaman po ng aking mga colleagues, yung pangyayari po sa aming probinsya. Sa Cagayan, ang worst po na nangyari, ginamit po ang pondo ng gobyerno para ikala no, ng aming gobernador doon ang tigi isang libo sa bawat botante sa kagustuhan daw na tanggapin nyo ito para huwag iboto ang kandidatong bumibili ng boto. So, yan po, uh, Mr. Chair, yung uh, gusto ko lang po na, ano, alam po, ulitin ko lang po, we will take this up on the proper committee. So, once again, uh, Mr. Chair, Bingo, uh, no, uh, marami salamat po, rest assured, again, sa Comelec family, uh, Mr. Chair Garcia, uh, of my 101% support, no, hindi lamang dito sa idinulog niyong 2023 budget at kung meron pa kayong mga programang iba katulad din po ng kagustuhan niyong magpayo ng sarili niyong bahay hindi lang sa national sana mabigyan din ng pondo ang pagpayo ng bahay ng Pomelec sa aming probinsya kasi po nakakaawa naman din na palipat-lipat sila at napakaliit po nung opisina ng Pomelec no ay na, napaka-importante pisina na hindi po nabigyan ng kaukulang pondo o kaukulang pansin. So again po, maraming salamat sa inyo at uh, Dios tiyagni na ako. Mabalo. Maraming salamat uh, Kong Jojo. Uh, we take note of your uh, manifestation and your concerns. Uh, we'll proceed po. The next uh, interpolator will be from uh, Vice Chair Joe Boy Aquino. Yes, uh, please proceed, uh, Vice Chair. Thank you, uh, Sir Chairman. Uh, good afternoon. Magandang uh, tanghali, Chairman Garcia, sa lahat po ng mga Commissioner at sa Comelec family. Simple lang po, Chairman, no? Number one, I am for the election for this coming October, the barangay election, and I support na magkaroon kayo ng sarili nyo ng building. Ito naman ho, siyempre, para makita ang malaking pagbabago sa COMELEC. Every three years, always na lang ang COMELEC Napakaraming problema. Batikos dito, batikos doon. Di ba? Kasi nga, sa eleksyon. Now, I do really believe under your leadership, Chairman, no, dapat kayong bigyan ng pagkakataon na ipakita ang malaking pagbabago sa COMELEC. Kaya ako po, gusto kong matuloy talaga itong barangay eleksyon. Dahil eh, sa mga sa may sinasabi na kumbaga justice delayed, no? justice denied. Para nyo rin nyo pong dinideny ang democracy at ang rights ng mga tao na pumili ng kanilang gustong mga barangay officials. Again, simple lang ko, hingin ko sa inyo. Pakisabi lang po ulit magkano ang madadagdag pagka pinospon natin ang barangay election. Huwag na ho yung, yung sa building nyo. Ako po nagsusupport no? kung, kung ano mong paraan supportado ko po kayo para doon sa building nyo. May lupa na kayo, kailangan maglagay na ng sariling building. Sayang yung pera. So, simple lang ko. Chairman, again, please ano yung reason na bakit kailangan natin ituloy ang barangay election? Thank you. 
Well, as, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honours, thank you very much for that question. As far as the comedy is concerned, we are so prepared for the December 5, 2022 election. We would like to put that on record. We are prepared. How much are we going to spend if we are going to postpone and reset the election? If it is postponed by May, 17 billion. If it is postponed by December, 18 billion. We have now presently still on our possession, on our hands, 7.5 billion. So it would be 17 billion less 7.5 billion. So kailangan pa po namin, Your Honours, ng 9.5 more or less billion. Kung sakali naman pong December of 2023, Your Honour, kakailanganin po namin ng 18 less 7.5, mga more or less po 10 to 11 billion. Yun po po yung kailangan namin kung mapopospone ang barangay and SK election. Thank you. Lastly, may naalala na ako. Ready na ako ang pera para sa barangay election. Naandyan na po sa amin, ginagastos na po namin sa kasalukuyan, 8.4221 po yon Sa kasalukuyan po, 7.5 kasi po may nagastos na kami. Meron na kami na purchase at ngayon po nagsisimula na kami mag-award sa iba't ibang suppliers po namin. In the next two weeks, we're going to print 92 million ballots. So we will finish the printing in just a matter of one month at uh, tatapusin po namin yung printing ng balota na yan. Thank you. Very, very clear, uh, Chairman. Yung mga very valid reasons na dapat talaga tuloy ang eleksyon ngayon October. Thank you and uh, again, congratulations, uh, Chairman Erwin Garcia. Maraming salamat, uh, Vice Chair Joboy Aquino, for your interpolation. Uh, our next interpolator will give her uh, manifestation of support to uh, the COMELEC. May we call on uh, Vice Chair Mary Mitzi Kahayon Uy for her manifestation. Please Thank you proceed. so much, Mr. Chair, and uh, to the COMELEC family. Uh, um, thank you for the responses. I could not uh, ask any further because there's no question yet that, that, hasn't, that haven't been answered by our uh, very competent uh, chair, COMELEC chair. And uh, with that, kasi, uh, earlier po kasi, the committee on APRO had their, already their deliberation on the, and the most of the question had, questions had been answered earlier. Kaya, uh, Parang okay naman na po. I will no longer ask about the uh, this uh, whether or not uh, this uh, barangay election will push through. So uh, if I make uh, allow me, Mr. Chair, to make this uh, manifestation, uh, this representation and the second district of Caloocan City is strongly support the approval of the Commission on Elections uh, 2023 budget. Comelec as the protector of the ballot and our right to suffrage, it is imperative that we give full support to the fundings and resources of, that the Comelec needs in order to properly implement their various projects, programs, and activities leading to the conduct of our elections. This representation is also confident that the Comelec is incapable Hence, under the leadership of the seasoned lawyer who has invaluable experience and knowledge, whose track record has demonstrated his dedication and integrity and unwavering adherence to the rule of law. Again, as uh, I will join other colleagues, uh, who congratulates uh, Attorney George Garcia for be being appointed uh, on his position right now as a COMELEC chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you to the COMELEC family. Maraming salamat, uh, Vice Chair Mitch Kahayon. Uh, at this point in time, no, uh, it's already 12.20, and considering that our the chairman of COMELEC, Chairman Garcia, has been here in Congress since 6 a.m. Tama, <laughs> Chair. <laughs> so the chair would like to suspend... Uh, Okay, uh, with due consideration to uh, may, uh, suspend the hearing for a while, for, for two minutes.
hearing resume. Before we, bago po tayo mag-break, uh, tatawagin po ng chair ang ating kagalang-galang na Congressman Ed Lagman for his uh, manifestation. Mr. Chairman, the construction of a Comelec building has been a long dream of the Comelec. Because of the long delay of lack of appropriations, most probably that dream is becoming a nightmare. I understand from the presentation that the building would cost 9.3 billion. And that would be less than the additional expense we are going to incur if we postpone the December 2022 elections. So there is good reason to push through with the election and earmark and appropriate 9.3 billion for the construction of the Comlec building. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, uh, Congressman Silagman, for your support in no, the uh, construction of uh, Comelec's own building. Uh, and now, we will now uh, take a break, no, suspend our budget hearing and take a break for uh, one hour. Uh, as of now, it's 12.23, so we will resume at around 1.30 in the afternoon.
doon na Four pa lang. Okay na po sila. Uh, everybody, please settle down. We'll start in two minutes. Magandang hapon po sa lahat. Uh, the resumption of the budget hearing for fiscal year 2023. Sources of financing and expenditure levels and budget proposals is hereby called to order. Before anything else, I would like to recognize the presence of our former president, uh, Gloria Macapagal Arroyo, now Senior Deputy Speaker. To continue with our interpolation, uh, may we call on uh, Representative Peter Miguel for his interpolation. Please proceed. Sa Salamat po, Mr. Chair. Magandang hapon po sa lahat. Chairman, magandang hapon po. Um, Doon po sa second district ng South Cotabato po, milaanan po ng city government ang Comelec Provincial as well as City ng lupa, libre po. Ang katanungan ko lang po, eh, pwede po bang mapunduhan ito para habang nagpapaganda kayo ng gusali nyo dito sa Central, eh, dapat po, pantay din, maganda rin dapat po ang opisina ng ating pamunuan doon sa probinsya dahil meron ng lupa at uh, building na lang po ang kailangan po. Mr. Chair, Your Honors, definitely we will prioritize that. Yung po mga iba naming regional offices nga po, uh, dalawa po ngayon ay kasalukuyang ginagawa at nagawang po ng paraan ng Commission Elections na magkaroon ng pondo para po dito. So uh, we will definitely prioritize that for the next budgeting season, sir. Salamat, salamat po. Mapunta tayo dun sa <coughs> pagkabaristro po ng ating mga botante at uh, siyempre dumagsapo dahil mislooming barangay elections po. 
Pero marami rin cases po ng mayroong double entry, double registry. Lumalabas po in local parlance, flying voters. Ako yung nagtataka dahil akala ko noon meron tayong facial recognition na upon registering, makikita po kung ito po yung register na sa ibang lugar. Tama ho ba o hindi ito? Wala po tayong system that upon registering from the local office there, makikita na po kaagad or ito'y tinadaan pa sa sentral at saka babalik pa, saka lang malilinis yung listahan. Thank you, Mr. Chair, Your Honors. Uh, wala po tayo yung facial recognition uh, for purposes of uh, registration identification. But what we have right now, yung biometrics po, yun ang dahilan po kung bakit uh, pinapaliwanag namin sa publiko na kinakailangan bumalik sila sa local COMELEC kahit nag-submit sila ng application kung hindi pa sila nakukuha ng, ng fingerprint o kaya yung kanilang signature. Kailangan po namin yung fingerprints nila, Your Honors, simply because meron po kaming AFIS na tinatawag, Automated Fingerprint Identification System. So we have this program that can really verify whether a particular voter is a registered voter of another place, another municipality, city, or another barangay, either within the same province or outside of the province po. So, bineverify po namin yan at nakikita po kaagad. Ang ginagawa po ng local COMELEC natin, ito po yung ini-endorse nila yung mga names ng mga botante sa atin pong provincial election supervisors at yung mga provincial election supervisors naman ay nag-ask sa main office na nagpa-verify Uh, hindi po namin ma-decentralize yung operation na yan, Your Honors. Hindi namin maibigay doon sa aming local COMELEC because of the issue of, the, of data privacy. So, uh, bineverify po namin. And then, yung nakikita po namin na double or multiple registrants, pinapadala po namin yung listahan. Say, for example, po in Surala, South Cotabato, meron po halimbawa kami nakita na double or multiple registrants na mga 500. Yung 500 na names na po yun ay pinapadala namin sa local COMELEC in Surala. But the local COMELEC will not immediately cancel that name or the names of these, these uh, voters. Still, the election registration board of the municipality of Surala will convene and it's up to them whether they will cancel the, the name or they will still uh, retain the name. So, ganun po yung procedure natin, Your Honors. Po nga po, uh, with that procedure... Mahaba po at saka there is a human intervention in the middle and that is the election register, register, registration board. Alam lang po natin nangyayari po. May politika, may pressure, may ganun-ganun. Okay na po kung nakaupo si Congressman years to eh, pero po kung he disadvantage naman po yung iba. So yung akin sana po, at source from the very initial start of uh, registration, sana po may database na po tayo lahat. Ibig sabihin niyo po, nang, nang, nangangala pa rin po ba tayo hanggang ngayon ng thumbprint or uh, thumb marks? Hindi po ba perfect yung buong registradong botante ng buong Pilipinas ay eh, meron ng database of thumb marks sa opisina natin, sa data bank natin? Mer meron po kami, uh, Your Honors, uh, meron po kami, uh, kaya lang po, um, pag-apile po kasi ng application ng botante, Late, hindi pa po kaagad doon, uh, tama po kayo, hindi pa po kaagad doon yung verification. Because still, pag-file po niya ng application, mag under ko pa po ng proseso yung kanyang application. But of course, kasama na rin po doon yung pag-verify kung siya ay formerly registered voter or not, or a transferee. Alam niyo po kasi, Your Honor, if I may lang po maiksing maiksi. Kalimitan po kung bakit nagkakaroon ng multiple or double registration. Minsan naman po hindi intentional on the part of the voters. Ang problem lang po, despite advice from our local COMELEC, hindi po kasi sila nagpa-file your honors nung tinatawag na, na application for transfer of registration. Pag po nag-file, porket lumipat ng bahay, ang pina-file po nila is registration as an original voter. So meaning to say po, without knowing that you need to transfer your registration, otherwise, mariretain po yung earlier registration doon sa pinanggalingan niyang uh, lugar o presinto o yung bayan. So may, may procedure po. Again, Your Honor, we will, we will uh, seriously again revisit 
our procedure, as you have uh, intimated, we will try to look into the possibility of, in the earliest possible time, for the Commission or the local COMELEC to immediately determine the, the whether a voter is a previously registered voter or really just a transferred voter. Tama po kayo. Uh, yung election registration board po, Your Honor, wala pong magawa ang Commission election dyan because it's provided for by law. And uh, alam naman po natin, ang miyembro po ng ERB ay ang uh, election officer as a chairperson and the civil registrar and the supervisor of DepEd as members po. Opo. Um, <clears throat> yun nga po. Mm, Makiklens at makikita yung double registry upon checking in your database only nearing election time. Is it it? Parang malapit na. Hindi na ito yung kaagad-agad. Uh, with all due respect, uh, Your Honors, pwede po namin kaagad makita even if it's not uh, uh, very close to the election. We can find that out during the quarter uh, na nag-register po. Kasi po, we have 100 days before election, di ba, to file exclusion of uh, voters if we think it's, it's not uh, a proper voter. And 65 days kung uh, uh, lokal. So, yung nakikita ko, kung nakikita, na, makiklens natin later than this 165 days, we have no more time to file complaint. Hindi na kami, di ba, hindi na kami legal na magpa-exclude. Yung nakatakot na namin na dapat as early as possible, meron na talagang cleansing ng database, especially yung thumb mark. Kasi yung thumb mark na lang pinaka-last nyo eh. Diba? Yung name, number one, pag dumoble, question yon Pag dumoble yung uh, 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 the other thing. But at the end, yung thumb mark yung pinaka-last arbiter nyo eh. So yes. kung, kung sa huli na yon wala na kaming panahon para maitanggal pa sa botante yung tingin namin hindi dapat botante. Tama po kayo, mm -hmm. Your Honors, uh, Mr. Chair. Ang problem po kasi is because uh, constitutionally protected po yung right to vote. If, for example, uh, Your Honors, Mr. Chair, na-determine ng main office ng COMELEC, yung Information Technology Department namin, yung aming Election and Barangay Affairs Department, that a voter is a multiple registrant. Even if we require the election officer, Your Honor, to remove that name from the list, that election officer cannot immediately remove that name. Kasi po, mag a po, Your Honor, ng process. So, yung election registration board will still have to convene, and the election registration board is to decide kung tatanggalin o hindi. And of course, uh, Your Honor, uh, yung pong possibility Nasabi niyo nga po, Your Honor, the possibility, of, the possibility of irregularity can be present. Tatlo po kasi sila, and therefore, they always rule by majority. So even if the local COMELEC would like to remove that name as instructed by our main office, but if the two members of the ERB, the, the supervisor and the civil registrar, will outvote the election officer, then that name will still be retained in the list of voters. That is the reality, Your Honor, on the ground, and that is because that is what the law provides under Republic Act 8189. So we are constrained by that Republic. Anyway, uh, hopefully we'll find solution soon, sooner enough. Next, sir, is um, ano pong effect kung hindi matuloy yung barangay election come December 2022 and uh, may lipat by next year, Ano na yung time reckoning natin for this 100 days of filing uh, exclusion of voters? Kailan? Opo. Yes, Your Honor, Mr. Chair. Kung hindi po matutuloy ang eleksyon natin by December 5, 2022, on the assumption that it will be reset by May of 2023, we will be having our continuing registration. Again, we will start with the continuing registration of voters by October of this year and will end by, by November of this year also. Dalawang buwan lang po ang aming pong, uh, ang aming pong uh, schedule. Uh, so that to give time po yung sa sinasabi nyo, makapag-upos, makita, malaman, and then makapag-file ng proper petition or makapag-upos sa election registration board and petition in courts later. Kung sakali naman po, Your Honors, Mr. Chair, that uh, ang election ay marireset not 
by May, but by December 5, 20, uh, by December of 2023, we'll start again with the registration of our voters by again October of this year, but it will have to end by June of next year. So October to June po, medyo mahaba-haba yung period so that, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, we'll still have July, August, September, October, more or less to, cl to clean the entire list of voters. Wow, maliwanag po. And last, uh, doon po sa mga deso, sa bawat lugar-lugar po, uh, alam niyo po, napag-alaman ko ano, sa kalawak ng kinampanyang ko, meron na palang deso na ka naka-in place na long before pa. Ang akin lang po, nagkakaroon na sila ng too much familiarity sa mga kandidato. Eh, siyempre, nagkakaroon na rin ng biases. Ang sa akin lang po, magkaroon ba tayo ng way na randomly ishuffle to na hindi na sila paulit-ulit doon sa lugar na yon Na entrance na sila and even locals knows these teachers who are may ginagawang mil milagro. Alam na ng lokal, nagulat ako. So sa akin lang po, sana, kung hawak ito ng Comilec, pati mga DESO, pati mga ERBs, uh, ang tawag dito, ay eh, kung pwedeng, hawakin na rin, micromanage, na sana mabalasa ito bago mag-election po. Yes, Then Your Honor. It really affects us. Definitely, we will consider rotating them. Uh, at least po, mawala yung familiarity nila doon sa specific na lugar niyan. We will consider that, Your Honor. Thank you very much for that suggestion. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Your time has expired. No more inspired. further questions. Salamat yeah. po. Thank Whatever you very much, Your Honor. Congratulations, Attorney. Salamat. Thank you very much, uh, Kong Peter. Now we proceed uh, with uh, Kong Rosana Ria Vergara. I think she is in the Zoom. Let's wait for a few minutes to check if uh, she's in the Zoom. Uh, okay, okay. I think uh, Kong Vergara is not in the Zoom. So we will proceed uh, with with uh, Congressman, Congresswoman Maria Alona Samantha Santos for her interpolation. Please proceed. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon to everyone. To our Comelect family, um, Chair George Garcia, and of course to the, I am well aware that you're friends with Gov Lala, no? and of course Kong Raymond. Um, I just have one question for Comelect today, and whoever wants to answer, they could answer. Um, it's regarding the 63 barangays na nasali po sa BARM. They were... There was an announce announcement. Yung palapit na po ng eleksyon na pwede po silang bumoto for president, vice president, senator, and of course, party list. However, sabi nyo, that time, it would be the last time. So going forward, what will, be the, or what will happen to BARM as the next election in three years from now will actually take place. Will, still they, will they still be able to participate for the 2025 election or that has not been discussed? Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, your honors. Uh, without being accused of uh, violating the subjudicial rule, there is a pending case before the Supreme Court and I was the one who filed and mm -hmm. questioned the action of the Comelec in that, uh, in that uh, Supreme Court case. And uh, whatever will happen in that case, whatever will be the decision of the Supreme Court in that case, will definitely impact on the action of mm -hmm. Comelec. As far as we are concerned, in the meantime, Your Honors, we are still waiting for the action of the barn as mm -hmm. to whether they will consider the 63 barangays as municipalities within the barn. And at the same time, kung consider po nila municipalities, saan po nila isasama na probinsya? So medyo may konti parang pong problem din hanggang ngayon po, hindi pa rin po sila kumikilos doon sa bagay na yan. And therefore, kami po sa Comelec, naghihintay po kami doon sa action na yon. Otherwise po, the same thing will happen again in 2025, Your Honor. Sana po, before that, uh, the 2025 election, we'll be able to have a resolution whether the, the exclusion of the 63 barangays from the, the, the mother province is really constitutional, valid, 
or is it uh, legal? And at the same time, we have to determine yung system po. Try to imagine your honor, napakahirap po ng kalagayan ng COMELEC kasi we computerized the 2022 election, tapos manual ang 63 barangays. Medyo nahir nahirapan po kami doon dahil uh, siyempre po, two systems, one election, you cannot do that. It should always be one system, one election. So, uh, uh, at, as of this time, we are still waiting for the action. Uh, but as far as the COMELEC is concerned, uh, in the meantime, Your Honor, uh, we'll be very candid. Wala pa po kami discussion tungkol do sa 63 barangays, but we will come to that later. We are likewise asking the, uh, respectfully asking the BARM to clarify the status of the 63 barangays. Thank you, Chair Garcia, and of course, thank you to Comelec. We just wanted to point it that, pointed that out, because there are many people mga komunidad na parte sa BARM na nag-question na rin po anong aba daw ang kanilang future when it comes to voting. Yun na po, maraming maraming salamat po, Mr. Chair, and good afternoon to everyone. Thank you very much, uh, Kong Samantha Santos. Uh, we'll proceed to the next interpolator who will give his uh, manifestation. Uh, may we call on uh, Deputy Speaker Democrito Mendoza. Please proceed, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair and uh, Chairman of the COMLEC, the COMLEC family. Maayong hapon kayo tanan and the Commissioner, of course, uh, Commissioner German Garcia. Uh, COMLEC, uh, Amy uh, Ferolino, my hapon de ma'am, tagabansalan man day. And of course, uh, Commissioner Nelson uh, Silis was also a, uh, a uh, we're all the World War II. My manifestation, Mr. Chair, is quite simple. Uh, thank you for that answer because we're, I'm also from Region uh, 12, uh, the province of Cotabato. And uh, personally, I witnessed that two systems, I hope in the Maulit. One is manual and the other one is uh, uh, automated. With that being said, kami naman sa TUCP fully supports your vision and of course, uh, finding a new home. And finally, can you imagine a constitutional body na kailangan talaga ng may building. And I think we have a commitment a firm at that, hopefully from the chairman himself and also uh, the chair in this, uh, uh, for, for this purpose. And of course, uh, uh, for the leadership, uh, a new home in uh, somewhere in Pasay. So uh, that, uh, uh, that's about it, uh, Mr. Chair. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, and thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Chairman Garcia. Dagang salamat, Deputy Speaker. Uh, our next interpolator will be uh, our Vice Chair, uh, Benny Abante. Sir, you're next. You, you please proceed with your interpolation. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Una -una po, congratulations. Uh, Chairman Garcia for your uh, being the chairman of the COMELEC. I just would like to ask, the, because you know, the perennial problem we have during the election is no longer cheating in the COMELEC, because I believe that the, the, the kind of election we have today is not anymore like many, many years back. No during the manual uh, election. But the real problem we have, uh, Mr. Chairman, is the uh, cases of vote buying. You know? So I just would like to ask, uh, uh, do you have any solution in this vote buying thing, uh, Mr. Chairman? Thank you very much, Mr. Chair and, uh, uh, and uh, your honors. As uh, pointed out earlier by this representation, your honors, indeed, there is a great need to revisit our law on vote buying under 261A of the Omnibus Election Code. There is a need to redefine vote buying simply because it does not cover the modern type of how you buy votes. Dati po, your honors, wala namang paymaya, GCash, wala rin naman po transfer ng pera sa pamamagitan ng cellphone and such other uh, initiatives such as 
madami pong watchers sa labas na bastang presinto, watcher, watcheran, yan po ay vote buying. So pag tinignan nyo po yung ating definition, may loophole po kasi na pwedeng maiwasan ng mga individual na nagkukumit ng vote buying. So dapat po ma-plug yung loophole na yon magkaroon tayo ng modern definition of what vo vote buying is. Siguro po maganda rin pong karagdagan, Your Honors, yung pong proposal, yung pong uh, bill na nakapending po dito sa House of Representatives, patungkol po sa pagtataas ng penalty sa mga mapapatunayang guilty ng vote buying. Pero alam nyo po, come to think of it, if we are going to extensively determine the root cause of why masyadong malawak, mal ma 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 malalim ang vote buying sa kasalukuyan, Your Honors, is because of the fact that the COMELEC investigates, the COMELEC acts as the prosecutor. We've determined whether there is probable cause or not. Mukhang guilty. Hanggang doon lang po kami, Your Honors. Hindi po kami pwede magsabi na guilty yan. Ang problem po namin, Your Honors, is, is that the fact that it's very difficult to build a case. Why? You need a very determined Uh, complainant, a complainant that has sufficient evidence, an evidence that will stand the scrutiny of the courts. Kung sa COMELEC lang po, we can always determine mukhang guilty to. Pero once the case is filed in court, ang problem po is the court will determine whether there is guilt beyond reasonable doubt. Whether, whether if the evidence as presented your honors, if weighed together, will really point to the culpability of the accused. Problema po, uh, Your Honors, kalimitan, mag-file po kami ng case sa court. Pagkatapos ng eleksyon, nag-withdraw po ang mga complainants for whatever reason. Number two, yung po mga ebidensya na na-file, misan nawawala o misan po ay hindi naman talaga ganun katibay. Bakit po? Sample po, uh, Your Honors. Sa mga aming po mga abogado, halimbawa po, nag-present ka ng video na namimili, namimigay. Ang problem po, Your Honors, kung tayo lang pong ordinary mga mamamayan, pag nakita natin yung video, ah, guilty yan, namimigay. Pero pag korte na po ang tumingin dyan, hindi po kaagad yun ang pagdetermine because the court will still determine sinong kumuha ng video. Anong, anong, anong ginamit sa pagkuha ng video? Anong oras kinuha? Mainit ba? Maaraw? Gabi? So lahat pong yan ay mga tatanungin and doon po kalimitan, nagpe-fail because the evidence will, stand, will not stand scrutiny of the court. It will not stand the issue of credibility, and the issue of admissibility of the evidence. So all of these things considered, that's it's the, why the, it's the, the reason why it's very, really difficult to prosecute the, the crime of, um, of vote buying. And likewise, yung vote buying po kasi it takes two to tango. It does not involve only the vote buyer, but it likewise involves the vote seller. So, so kung ako po yung binigyan ng pera, gusto ko man po magreklamo, lalo tinanggap ko yung pera, problem po is, baka po pati ako ma-prosecute. So naandun po yung takot talaga na, na magre-reklamo ako, e eh, tinanggap ko yun, ma-prosecute na din po ako, dalawa kami, nung vote buyer. And take, last na po, kalimitan naman po yung namimili, hindi talaga yung politiko. Ang kalimitang namimili yung mga tao ng politiko. And the, therefore, we need to restudy our the cases and our laws because we need to determine may principal ba na accused dito, may accessory ba, mayroon bang, mayroon bang accomplished lang, o dapat eh, porket ito ay leader ni, ni congressman ganito, ni mayor ganyan, sigurado si congressman o si mayor yung guilty na yan. We cannot connect that because, sir, in, in criminal law, in criminal law because crime is always personal to the accused, you have to prove that indeed there is a relationship between the vote buyer and the supposedly principal. It's very difficult really to connect. What is the solution? Legislation for your honor. For example, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, in one election, <coughs> nakahuli kami, no, nang talagang mibili ng boto. Nakita namin yung pera. Nakalagay yung pangalan ng kahit dato rin sa envelope. Pero, ang vote seller is a senior citizen. Ano? Kasuhan man namin, hindi makakasuhan mismo yung kandidato, kundi yung vote seller. Nakakaawa, kaya pinakawalan namin. So, sa legislation na iniisip natin, no? Can we include the candidate mismo even if the vote seller is just one of the leaders? Yes, Your Honor, Mr. Chair. Under our uh, existing jurisprudence and our existing laws, 
Congress can always define a crime, and all Congress can always determine how, how uh, to punish a criminal for the violation of an act. So meaning to say, nasa inyo po yon. If we can reasonably, reasonably connect the vote seller to a principal, to a candidate, then therefore, that candidate can likewise be charged if only we can correct the, 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 correct the existing legis uh, laws that we have by legislation. Pwede po, Your Honor. Kung halimbawa lagi po yung kasama, halimbawa ni Mayor A, then therefore, may mga, may mga pictures, may mga witnesses nandi, lagi siyang kasama, siya yung mismong uh, kanang kamay niyan, mapapatunayan. Then, reasonably, namimigay yan, then we can easily conclude if the law will be amended that the act of this one is the act of the principal, that this one is merely acting as the agent of the principal. What about, Mr. Chair, uh, siguro kinakailangan na rin nating palitan yung contribution, ano? Kasi sa akin, that is hypocritical. You know, I mean, I do not know of any politician who will only spend three pesos per voter. Or perhaps, in the national election, 10 pesos per voter. I think it is high time for us to really uh, change the omnibus election code on that matter, Mr. Chair. You are correct, uh, Mr. Chair, your, your honors, sapagkat uh, hindi na po up to date yon, hindi na po makatotohanan, 3 pesos, 5 pesos, and 10 pesos. If a candidate for mayor has 50,000 voters times three, that's only 150,000 pesos during the 45-day period of the campaign. That is really impossible that he will be spending only 150,000 pesos. So we were, in fact, before proposing to increase that to 20 pesos, 25 or 30 pesos, as the case may be, depending on the position na tinatakbuhan po niya. Para naman po maging reasonable, and at the same time, sabi nga po ng iba, eh magsisinungaling din lang naman po yan eh. But just the same, we are being uh, realistic in the in, in, as far as the law is uh, concerned. So we are still hoping that as far as campaign finance reform is concerned, maybe we are asking, respectfully asking Congress to mod increase na po natin para naman po hindi naman 3, 5, and 10. Baka naman po pwedeng 20, 25, 30 pesos po. Mr. Chair, on the issue naman ng postponement ng barangay election, uh, I was with the Appropriations Committee kanina, and I heard you saying that uh, by 2023, uh, the precincts will increase ano, from 107,000 now to 139,000. Am I right in what I'm saying? Mr. Chair, Your Honors, 207,000 presently, 207,000. Okay, and in 2023, it will become 239,000. 230,000 in May of 2023 and 239,000 in December of 2023, Your Honor. Therefore, uh, to conduct the barangay election next year would be more expensive than if we conduct the election today. Uh, Your Honors, uh, your, uh, Mr. Chair, by conducting it, by, by postponing the election this year and conducting it next year, we will be needing additional uh, budget for that. Again, uh, for the record, as far as the comic is concerned, if we are going to postpone it by May of 2023, we'll be needing additional 17 billion pesos, less the 7.5 billion pesos that we have right now in our uh, possession. And by December of 2023, we'll be needing 18 billion pesos, less 7.5 billion pesos. So 9.5 by May or 10.5 something by December of 2023. Well, Mr. Chair, ibig sabihin niyan, hindi tayo makakatipit, di ba? And besides that, the one, the, the, the amount allocated to the COMELEC on the Barangay election this year cannot even be touched. You are correct, Mr. Uh, Chair, Your Honors, because of the issue of the so-called fiscal autonomy of the Commission election. And in, our, in the past, in the, in the 2017 supposed barangay election, when we postponed the barangay election to 2018, there was a continuing appropriation provided for in that year. Yes. So whatever is the remainder of the 8.4221 billion budget that we have right now, 
will be subjected to continuing appropriation in the event that the same will be uh, used, in the event that the SKM Barangay election will be postponed. Therefore, in reality, Mr. Chair, uh, what you're saying now is the postponement of the election actually is not economics but political. I, I'm not uh, at liberty, Your Honor, to make a, such a declaration with all due respect and pardon the, the excuse, excuse your this representation for that, Your Honor. Thank you very much, Thank Mr. Chair. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you, Vice Chair Benny. Uh, our next interpolator is no other than uh, Vice Chair Divine Yu. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon, everyone, to my colleagues, and of course, to the COMELEC. And congratulations to the chairman for the appointment. Um, I just have one question, chairman. Um, with regard to Component City, uh, seeking to be a highly urbanized city, um, I understand one of the requirements is the plebiscite um, 90 days, within 90 days after the proclamation of the president. Uh, my question is, who will stand for the plebiscite and is it the whole province who will vote for that uh, plebiscite? And if the COMELEC is the one who will spend, is, the, is it uh, included in the budget of uh, the COMELEC? Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chair, your honors. There was a case of Umali versus the commissioner election. In that case, the Supreme Court decided and ruled that in case of the conversion of a city, whether a component city into a highly urbanized city, then in that case, the Supreme Court said all the population of the mother province should vote for the conversion of that, uh, of that uh, uh, component city into a highly urbanized city. Then the, that being the case, originally, supposedly, the proponent which happens to be the city should be the one to spend. In, in a plebiscite, it will be the local government unit that will, will be spending. And therefore, Your Honor, since it will be the entire province that will be, uh, that will be voting whether to convert that into a highly urbanized city or not, then there is that problem that the province which may not be amenable to the conversion of that city into a highly urbanized city will not be spending for the uh, expense for the plebiscite or even for the sake of argument that the component city would like to spend uh, the question is whether the component city can, will is willing to spend for the conduct of the plebiscite for the entire province instead only of a party of that particular city as far as the comic uh, your honors mr. chair is concerned we are willing to conduct any plebiscite so long as there is budget provided for by the LGU, regardless whether it will be coming from the mother province or whether it will be coming from the component city who wanted to convert itself into a highly urbanized city. That's all, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Vice Chair uh, Divine Yu. And now uh, we're proceeding to the second round with uh, our Deputy Minority Leader, Franz Castro, but uh, may I remind uh, Deputy Minor Minority Leader, Franz Castro, that you only have uh, two and a half minutes in the second round. Thank you very much. Please proceed. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, may kaugnayan ito, Mr. Chair, doon sa electioneering ng mga military, police, at saka yung NTF, LCAP. A lot of ano na, cases na yung final uh, regarding to this. So, um, meron po ba kayong updates or paano po ba kayo nagre-resolve ng mga ganitong cases? Ilang, uh, yung mga cases po na dinudulog sa inyo, uh, kailan po ba ito mare-resolve yung mga ganitong mga cases po? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, your honors. Pag po kasi election offense cases, para po sa understanding po nating lahat, this is actually filed before our law department. And the law department will be the one to conduct the so-called preliminary investigation requiring the respondents to file their so-called uh, sinumpang salaysay or counter affidavits. And then up to the, it's up to the complainant now to file their reply and then the rejoinder in order to complete uh, everything. I, I will definitely get back to you on this uh, matter, Your Honor, as far as the complaints that you have mentioned and the pending 
cases that uh, we have right now, we will definitely report to you the status of these cases. I will commit that to you, Your Honors. Sana po makakuha kami ng updates, kahit na updates, kasi isa rin po ako doon sa complainants, um, Sir Chair. Um, uh, uh, labas po dyan sa mga cases na yan, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, gano'n po ba katagal na re resolve ang mga, uh, ilang mga kaso? Ilan na po ba yung kaso, by the way, na nasa COMELEC, Mr. Chair, as of this moment? Um, Mr. Chair, Your Honors, doon lamang po sa atin pong mga election offense cases, katulad po yung inyong nabanggit kanina, yung sa una po yung katanong, we have at least mga 2,400 pending cases. The reason, uh, Your Honors, because um, nationwide po kasi yung tinatanggap namin, pag po kasi may nag-file ng isang kaso sa isang mun or munisipyo or kahit sa isang barangay lang, it will have to be filed before the Comelec Law Department. And the Comelec Law Department usually will require our provincial election supervisors to investigate, to, cause the, to proceed with the investigation. Or minsan naman po, doon pinapal sa mga provincial election supervisors or sa local COMELEC, and they will be the one to conduct the investigation. But the final say as to whether may probable cause your honor or wala ay ang main office ng COMELEC, more specifically, ang commission and bank. So doon po medyo sa sobrang dami po ng mga kaso talaga, I, we will readily admit that we, we were so overwhelmed, uh, Mr., uh, Mr. Chair, your honors, Isang sample lang po. We have a pending 400 cases involving candidates who failed to file two, uh, so say in two consecutive elections. Subject po sila, they will be subjected to perpetual disqualification to hold public office. Ang problem po, Mr. Chair, your honor, is that they still have to undergo the so-called due process. It is elementary principle that we will have to afford them due process. So these cases are being resolved by the two divisions of the COMELEC, dadalwa lang po ang division namin, at uh, number two po, Your Honor, ngayon lang po kasi kami, uh, pito po kaming miyembro dapat ng COMELEC, isang chairman at anim na commissioners. At uh, kung natatandaan po ninyo pong lahat, ay uh, may tatlo pong nawala na chairman and two commissioners, and that's why po, na kumuunti lang po yung miyembro ng commission. And so, uh, that, that is not an excuse. Uh, for not being able to resolve immediately the cases. But since kami po ngayon ay uh, lima na, together with the newly appointed commissioner, but in still a, in a regular appointment uh, classification, then hopefully po we'll be able to expedite everything, Your Honors, after the appointment of the last commissioner. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Pero meron po kasi itinatakdang prescribed number of ano, no, days na dapat na ma-resolve ang mga kaso according to the law. So halimbawa, yung isang kandidato, um, nag, nag, ano, no, nagkaroon ng complaints against sa isang kandidato regarding do, kung sino yung nanalo, di ba? So, matatapos na yung term <laughs> ng isang kandidato, Mr. Chair, ay hindi pa nare-resolve. So, ganun po yung nangyayari. Uh, at sa tagal na pagre-resolve ng kaso, yung, yung halimbawa ang kandidatong nanalo, hindi na, hindi na siya nakapag-serve ng kanyang ano, o one day na lang or two days na lang, may mga ganyang kaso kasi. Kaya dapat makapag-isip tayo ng innovations, um, pamamaraan, para mas madali natin mariresolve po yung mga kaso. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Your Honor, sa suggestion po, and uh, that's a wake-up call to, on the part of the Commission election. Uh, but uh, we, we would like to promise the Honorable Committee we will resolve immediately the cases. Um, as far as uh, uh, election offense cases are concerned, uh, we had been talking about the so-called constitutional guarantee to expeditious resolution of the controversies. And uh, our Supreme Court had already affirmed dismissal of cases, especially po pagka napakatagal na, na wala namang kasalanan na ng accused or respondent. Uh, we are now thinking of uh, dismissing certain cases dahil medyo napakatagal na po na hindi namang kasalanan nila. It may be our fault or because of certain processes. Tungkol naman po, Your Honor, sa... Uh, sa issue ng mga kaso katulad ng disqualification at mga protesta. Yung po kasing protesta, talagang medyo nahuhuli po yun, Your Honor, na nariresolve kasi po may mga balotang involved. Lalo pa po yung mga balota na kinukuha pa namin, uh, yung din po yung isang uh, problema sa ating umiiral ng mga batas. Pag po may protesta, pinabibilang yung balota, yung mga balota po ay kinakailangan dalahin dito sa Manila kung yan ay nakafile sa Comelec at dito po bibilangin yung mga balota isi-ship pa po yan, pagkatapos i-inventaryo, pagkatapos i -re po. So talagang matagal, may appreciation of ballots pa po. Yun naman pong disqualification cases, uh, 
Kalimitan po nari-resolve namin sa division level. Ang problem din po sa ating pong umiiral na patakaran, meron pong motion for reconsideration. Under Rule 18, Section 2 ng Comelec Rules of Procedure, the decision of the Comelec Division is not final if there is a motion for reconsideration. So, dalawang le level pa po. So, medyo yung pong proseso na yun, hindi, na sa, hindi po tumitigil lang sa division, meron pa pong motion for reconsideration. That's why, Your Honor, Mr. Chair, uh, may, may, sa haba ng proseso, hindi kagad nare-resolve. Although we really readily admit, mabilis na lang po, we readily admit that the, there is a period under the Constitution to resolve these cases, 90 days. However po, sinabi na rin naman po ng Supreme Court that this is not mandatory, this is merely directory. But we are taking into the heart the provision of the Constitution. We will take note of that uh, comment, Your Honor, of yours. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, marami po mga complaints sa COMELEC, ano, lalong lalo na pag malapit na yung eleksyon. Complaints ng mga personnel na overwork sila, yung mga personnel natin. So, tanong ko lang po, Mr. Chair, yung tungkol dito sa mga personnel natin, ilan po ba yung COs at saka yung mga GOs? Meron po bang kailanganin na additional na mga personnel ang COMELEC? Yes, uh, Your Honor. Supposedly po, lahat-lahat po ng aming mga empleyado ay mga 6,300. Sa kasalukayon po, meron po kaming uh, vacant positions na mga, na, na, mga 892 vacant positions. Why po vacant? Hindi po kasi na-fill upon siya, Your Honors, kasi kat katatapos lang po ng election ay uh, hindi po kasi nakapag-meeting ang uh, PSB, yung Personal Selection Board. But ngayon po, unti-unti na po kaming uh, nagpapamiting at uh, pin pinupunan yung mga vacancies po. Uh, JOs po namin, 552. COS, 160 po. Uh, Your Honor. Mr. Chair. So, mapipilapan po ba ito in the near future? Yung 892 vacant position? Y definitely, Your Honor. We intend to fill them up. Uh, and in fact, uh, Your Honors, we are, uh, uh, we are proposing a reclassification within the commission, uh, main office and field uh, offices. Kasi po, napakadami na pong positions, your owners, na hindi na po applicable sa present time. So, kinakailang i-adjust yung mga positions, including, including the salary grades. Uh, isang example po, your owners, and we, we, we would like to bring this up, bring this to the attention of the Honorable Committee. Katulad po, your owners, sa mga lawyers namin. Yung mga lawyers po kami, hirap na hirap po kami makakuha ng mga lawyers. Bakit po? Salary grade 18 po ang entry level sa amin. So, yung po mga ibang government offices na may kailangan ng lawyers, ang tataas po ng kanilang salary grade sa amin po 18. So, paano ka naman po papasok sa 18 kung ikaw ay isang lawyer na napakaganda naman ng track record? So, competitively po, talo po kami sa ibang mga law, sa ibang, kahit po sa PAO, kahit po sa uh, Office of the, the Prosecutors. So, Lagi po silang po doon muna, tsaka na lang po sila pumupunta. Tapos ang taas pa ng qualification requirements po sa amin ng mga trainings, samantalang ang pwede mag-apply sa amin mga bagong lawyer. So we are still, we are presently undergoing the so-called uh, reclassification uh, of our uh, different positions. Hopefully po, no, ma-fill up, ma up na po itong mga position. Last na lang, uh, Mr. Chair, I'm wrapping up. No? Nakinig din po kasi ako dun sa CA confirmation ninyo, uh, Mr. Chair, at nagtanong isang senador na kung magkakaroon daw ng isang line doon sa out of office ba ito na sabing ganun, I will not support any organization that advocates violence or unlawful means to achieve its goals to overthrow the government of the Republic of the Philippines. So, Okay po ba kayo dito? Parang sinasabi natin kung okay kayo dito, eh di pwede rin maglagay ng line na hindi ako magnanakaw sa gobyerno pag napasok ako sa gobyerno. So pag ganito, uh, necessary pa ba ito yung mga ganitong line sa mga out of office or whatever? Kasi given naman ah, na talagang pag pumunta ka sa gobyerno, hindi ka wag advocate ng violence, te uh, terrorist or whatever, di ba? Uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair, Your Honors. Uh, actually po, yung naging katanungan ay para sa certificate of candidacy po. Kung napapansin po natin, meron pong mga declaration doon that I am a natural born Filipino citizen, etc. hanggang number 14. And so, uh, ang suggestion po, baka pwedeng ilagay po yung num sa number 15 that I will not advocate uh, violence or uh, etc. So, kasi daw po, and I, we, we agree naman po, uh, Your Honor, na nasa, nasa batas na po natin yon, kahit po sa Republic Act, sa aming pong Comelic Resolution 9360, 9360, uh, 9633, or 9366, 
na nakalagay po doon na kahit sa party list at saka sa political parties that they will not advocate any violence or any uh, act uh, to undermine the government of the Republic of the Philippines. So kasama na po yun. Pwede naman po talaga in fairness hindi po mailagay yun. Pwede rin naman pong ilagay yun. Wala naman din pong uh, nagbabawal. And siguro po ang gagawin na lang po namin, uh, Your Honors, doon ay gagawa kami ng isang sentence that will, will be a catch-all sentence, katulad din po ng mga binabanggit. It will be a catch-all sentence so that it will not uh, discriminate as against uh, against uh, one organization, one group, kahit pa hindi direct, kahit pa kahit pa ang dating eh, uh, implied lang, so that it will not be, it will not cause a due harm do naman po sa organization. We are so careful with that, Your Honor, simply because the commission election is always impartial and should be independent. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Maraming salamat, uh, Deputy Minority Leader Franz Castro, for your interpolation. Uh, we now proceed with the next interpolator from uh, Kong Jil Bongalon. Please proceed. Mr. Chair, uh, I, will uh, I will no longer interpolate, but uh, after several hours of uh, questioning and interpolation from our colleagues, I move to uh, terminate the budget briefing of the Commission on Elections. I so move, Mr. Chair. Second. Second, Any second? Mr. Chair. So there was a motion to terminate the budget hearing of COMELEC. It's been seconded. So the motion is now carried. Move to adjourn. Any pass? Yeah. Since uh, there's a motion to terminate, uh, we now suspend the budget hearing uh, for the fiscal year 2023 budget. Thank you very much.
Recording stopped. Ayo pagmula na kami sa para okay ni.
sound check one two or do check
Recording in progress. The budget briefing is resumed. Esteemed colleagues, OIC Commissioner Roland Cafe Pondok, COA family, ladies and gentlemen, magandang hapon po, and uh, welcome to the COA budget briefing. The Commission on Audit is one of the four constitutional commissions which enjoys fiscal autonomy and whose approved annual appropriations, according to the Constitution, shall be automatically and regularly released. Ito po ay dahil napakahalaga ng papel na ginagampanan ng COA sa gobyerno, lalo na sa budget process, at importante na manatili itong independent. Speaker Martin Romaldes has vowed to make sure that every centavo of the budget will be spent wisely to implement programs that would save lives, protect communities, and make sure our economy is strong and more agile. COA is an important partner in this endeavor as the Commission is mandated to examine, audit, and settle government's accounts pertaining to the, re to the revenue expenditures and uses of funds. The job of the Appropriations Committee does not end in the approval of the budget. Kailangan mo monitor natin kung paano ginagastos ang kaban ng bayan para masigurong nakakarating ang programa ng gobyerno sa tao. COA's job, especially the generation of audit reports, is an important instrument to achieve this goal. The critical information from the COA reports allow Congress to assess the absorptive capacity of each agency, learn the integrity of its processes, and identify gaps in the efficiency of its systems. Sa tulong ng COA reports, masusing mapag-aaralan kung magkano lang ang pondong kayang pakinabangan ng mga ahensya at maiiwasan na masayang ito. Ang trabaho natin sa hapon na ito ay pakinggan ng COA, kilatisin ang panukalang budget at pag-aaralan kung magiging sagabal sa kanilang pagtupad ng mandato ang kakulangan ng budget. Maraming salamat. So, at this point, um, we shall proceed with the budget presentation. OIC Commissioner Roland Pondok, you are recognized. Before you begin your presentation, kindly introduce your team. Thank you. Um, isang pagbati po ng magandang hapon to our chair and to the vice chair. 
and also to the speaker and to the minority leader and the majority leader as well as the uh, esteemed members of this August committee and to all the members of the House of Representatives. Uh, again po, uh, magandang hapon sa ating lahat. Kasama ko po ang buong uh, COA family officials. Uh, kasama ko dito si Commissioner Mario Lipana. Uh, isa din hong membro ng uh, commission proper. Uh, ako po si Roland Pondok, uh, designated as officer in charge in behalf of our chair, Jose Kalida. Uh, dito po sa aking kaliwa, uh, mga assistant commissioners, si assistant uh, commissioner Nilda Flaras, assistant commissioner Winnie Incaliado, assistant commissioner Lorna Kabuchan, assistant commissioner Roland Ray, Assistant Commissioner uh, Fertonata Rubico. And we also have uh, Assistant Commissioner uh, Juliano, Alex Juliano, and Beth Desus. Sorry. And then Assistant, Assistant Commissioner Roy Orsal, Assistant Commissioner Cora um, De La Cruz. At lahat pong nasa likod po ay, ay meron pong isa? Si Adelawa, si Assistant Commissioner Roxanne Sese, and si Assistant Commissioner Mary Adeline. And directors all from the different uh, offices, especially from the offices of the commissioners and the chairman. Thanks a lot. Commissioner, you may proceed with your presentation. Um, we will proceed to the the figures, uh, Your Honor, uh, Ms. Madam Chair, you may allow directly to the the comparative figures between the approved NEP and the 2022 approved budget, so that we can have uh, the idea kung magkano ba ang medyo bumaba dun sa pinigay ko na ng DBN na budget. Sa 2023 NEP, ang PSO namin na approved is 12,467,334. Uh, billions. Uh, pero dun ho sa 22 budget na approved sa GAA, dapat po sa 2022 is 13 billion. So, nag-decrease po siya ng 781 million at ito po ay nanggagaling doon sa pagbaba ng uh, plantilla namin na inaprubahan ng DBM from uh, 14,000 personnel ginawa na lang ho nilang 13,000 or a significant difference of 819 and also sa the same comparative data uh, Madam Chair ang MOE namin eh, although nag-increase siya compared to 2022 budget versus the 2023 NEP ng 26 million per hundred pero ang capital outlay namin compared sa 2022 budget versus the 2023 NEP approved by the DBM nag-decrease po ng 90 million 939 dito sa pangalawang pahina po makikita natin ang diferensya ng NEP approved versus the 2023 proposed budget ng COA. Sa personal services, bumaba pa rin ho. Uh, ang approved lang po is 12 million or 12 billion, 12.4 or almost 12.5 billion versus sa 2023 budget proposals ng COA na 12.9 uh, billion. Uh, nag bumaba ho siya ng 455,643 million. Again, the same reason po dahil binawasan ho nila yung, uh, yung plantilla na pinopropose namin and it was only approved at 13,283 instead na 14,102. Sa MOOE naman po, dalawa lang naman po ang, uh, ang aming concern sa MOOE at personal services. Kasi ang capital outlay, wala naman ho silang binawasan sa aming capital outlay based on our budget. 
the MOE bumabaho ng 268,000 20, uh, 268 million 21 or almost 42% na nabawa sa MOE. May mga dahilan po na kung bakit nila binawasan at sana po yun po ang hinihingi namin from this uh, from later on na uh, kung sana po eh, pwedeng ibalik po yung pinopropose namin na budget compared sa, N sa NEP approved. Uh, so far, yun lang po ang pwede ko ma-presenta ngayon. Although, uh, I know lahat naman po ng membro ng komite eh, may kopya na po ng mga reports namin. Maraming salamat po. Okay. Salamat, Commissioner. So at this point, we formally open the floor to questions. Um, or some reminders first, each member has five minutes for questions, and those five minutes do not include the responsive, responses of the resource persons. And uh, we also have a long-standing tradition in the House of Representatives to give preferential treatment to the minority members, and they will be followed by the majority members in an alternating manner. So, uh, with that, we proceed to the first interpolator, from the minority, the chair recognizes Deputy Minority Leader Franz Castro. Thank you, ma Madam Chair. Pwede kong matanong, Madam Chair, muna kung asan si Chairman Jose Calida? At bakit po siya hindi nakarating sa briefing? Opo. Uh, salamat po sa tanong. Um, nagbigay na po siya ng sulat to the, the committee and appropriation na nakalagay ho doon na uh, he's on medical leave po. For the information of Representative Franz Castro, nandito po sa akin ang uh, sulat ni Chair Jose Calida to explain his absence. May proceed. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. So, dito lang po sa, ano, no, sa personal services, uh, from, from your plantilla approved 14,102 to 13,283. So, from 14,102 ko na personnel, ilan po dito yung mga uh, field position at ilan yung regular, COS, tsaka yung JOs? Uh, yung JOs ho namin, uh, nung nakaraang taon po, eh, na convert na ho namin to plantilla. So, wala na ho halos kaming JO ngayon. Kung meron ho, konti na lang ho talaga. Yung mga hindi ho nakapasa doon sa pag-convert from J.O. to Plantilla. So, halos lahat ho ito, uh, Plantilla po. And the, ibig sabihin, Madam Chair, yung 14,102 positions, they're all filled up? Uh, hindi pa po, hindi pa po. Uh, yun ho ang proposed ho namin, yung 14. Ang in lang ho is 13,000. Oh, ah, okay. Kaya nag so, parang... po. 14,102 yung propose ninyo. Ilan po dito yung mga unfilled positions? O yung pipil upan yung position sana? Sa 2022, we have a field positions of 8,276 and the unfilled is 5,826 based on the 14,000 na proposed plantilla. So, malaki po, ma Madam Chair, no? kasi alam ko yung mga auditors natin, talagang overwork din ito. Uh, na, 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 naging saksi ako mismo no? doon sa isang bayan, na yung isang auditor, ilang bayan yata yung ino-audit. Yes. So, napakahirap na trabaho. Itong, eh, tapos ito, binawasan pa siya no? ng 809. 19 mula doon sa kanilang request. So sana maibalik natin to Madam Chair no in due time at ma-request natin sa DBM. So ako po ay ano no, ako po ay sumasang-ayon doon sa inyong proposal na madagdagan kayo tam ng ano no ng mga uh, plantilla positions based on your request. Um pangalawa Madam Chair, yung tungkol dito sa NTFL CAP funds o yung uh, pondo ng NTFL CAP. So, meron po ba tayo na na-audit report about the utilization nitong NTFL CAP mula nung ito po ay um, uh, naipatupad hanggang sa huling ano po, um, last fiscal year? Can we have it 
pati yung mga barangay development program, pwede po ba kami makakuha ng audit report kaugnay nito? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, I'd like to refer it to the Assistant Commissioner assigned, uh, Assistant Commissioner Sese. Hello. You're recognized. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, yes, ma'am. Uh, the NTF LCAC was audited on an agency basis depending on where the fund uh, was given. So we have the SWD, for example, TESDA. Uh, right now, uh, the consolidation will be done when the AFR, um, when the report on the annual financial report, I mean, comes out. Uh, nandun na po. Pero right now, it has been published na po yung mga individual uh, annual audit reports, nandun po siya sa mga reports na yon po. And we have a consolidated um, annual audit uh, per agency, per year, at saka kasama na itong Barangay Development Program, Madam, Madam Chair. Sige po, uh, ipapakonsolidate po namin. Okay. Kindly submit the consolidated report to the com Committee on Appropriations. So next, uh, Madam Chair, uh, doon pa rin pala sa budget, balik ako, no? Napansin natin na mas mababa yung budget para sa MOOE ng lahat ng mga programa ng COA kumpara sa kung ano ang inirekomenda ng DBM. For example, Madam Chair, sa operations, 3.48 million ito na mas mababa kaysa sa proposed MOOE ng budget ng COA. So, um, paano kaya ito makaka-apekto doon sa operations ng COA, Madam Chair? magbigay po nga kayo ng mga significant na na, na mga um, na ano no na makakapekto sa mga operation. Uh, yes, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, isa pong rason na, na pagbabaho nito is the decrease po. Pinabaan uh, nila yung operational cost of the 10 completed pisauso namin yung Provincial Satellite Audit Office na naging bahay po ngayon ng aming mga auditors. So, nawala ho yung 26 uh, million para po sana doon sa operational cost ng every PISAO or Provincial Satellite Audit Office. So, hindi ho namin mamamaintain ng, ng sakto yung bawat opisina wherein we can already say that um, yung mga PISAO so na yun, yun po ang uh, bali Doon nagtatrabaho yung mga auditors namin, so kinakailangan din ho namin sana mahingi. Uh, ibalik ko yung, yung 26 million na yun for the 10 completed uh, peace house ng COA. Um, so Madam Chair, wala, na, wala naman na rin po ako ibang, ano, no, ibang tatanungin sa COA. Uh, kuhanin ko na lang po yung report ano, before the plenary doon sa nire-request natin and I am with the ano, ano, with the COA to increase their budget according to their uh, request to the DBM, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Your Honor. Salamat, Rep. Castro. Next to interpolate is from the majority, Vice Chair Jose Aquino II. You are recognized. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, Madam Chair, after going through the proposed budget of the COA, uh, just like to manifest that I support their budget. Thank you, Madam Chair. Salamat. We still have four minutes and 42 seconds. Okay na. <laughs> All right, so next to interpolate is from the minority, the chair recognizes Deputy Minority Leader Bernadette B.H. Herrera. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, can I be heard? Yes, we can hear you loud and clear. Yes. But, Please proceed. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, I only have one quick question. Um, good afternoon to the Kua family. Meron pong, um, it was, I, I read in the papers that there's a 98 million worth of laptops na nakatenga lang po sa DICT warehouse. Then when I asked uh, Secretary Ivan Uy kung paano yun, baka pwede na niyang i-distribute or something, sabi niya hindi dahil siya daw ang mapapahamak sa COA. So what do we do with these inventory na nakastock lang? Um, we know na, yun nga, in questionable how they were um, purchased and all that. Kaya lang, 
pera pa rin to ng gobyerno, nakastock siya sa warehouse, walang gumagamit, mabubulok. Ano po bang recourse na pwede dito? Through you, Madam Chair. Uh, yes, uh, Madam Chair. Thank you po sa question. Uh, Iti-check ho namin kung ano ho pang kailangan or kung pwede na hong ipaparilis, iti-check ho namin. As of now, wala pa ho kaming data. So, we need to to verify everything, Madam Chair, Your Honor. Ano po bang policy natin dito? Because we understand, syempre, kasalanan, kunwari, previous administration, we have a new administration now. Anong standing policy natin doon? Kasi kesa naman mabulok siya, hindi ba dapat tignan natin kung saan siya magagamit na agency or saan siya magagamit at mapapakinabangan? Ano po ang policy ng COA when it comes to these things? Through you, Madam Chair. Commissioner Pondo? Yes. Ah... Uh, Ang nag-purchase po kasi is the management. So, prerogative ho yun ang management. Hindi ho uh, under the jurisdiction ng COA as to the distribution. No, no. I-clarify ko, Madam Chair, if I may. No, ang point ko kasi, pinagbawalan daw ng COA, i-distribute ito because questionable yung pag-purchase ng previous um, administration ng DICP. So, ngayon, nakatenga lang sa warehouse ng DICP. Then when I think Secretary Ivan Puy inquired from COA if it's okay to to already distribute it or make use of it, ang sabi daw ng COA is ang, ma, ang magkakaroon ng problema is the new administration or the new secretary. So, paano po yun? Kesa naman mabulok itong mga kagamitan na to. Ano ang policy? Now, I'm sure it's not just happening in the ICT but in other agencies as well. So I want to know ano po ang policy ng COA. Uh, I-verify ho namin kasi wala naman ho kaming sinasabi na hindi ho pwede. Baka i-clear lang ho namin kung ano ho yung gusto nilang uh, malaman as to kailan, paano ang pag-distribute ng mga items na yon. Pero pag sinabi ng COA na hindi pwede, parang hindi ho yata yon tama na sagot. So, i-check ho namin, i-verify ho namin kung ma maaari ho, mas maganda kung makausap po namin yung yung nag uh, yung nagtanong. At okay, please. Yes po. O sige nga po, and um, please uh, enlighten us and if there are things like this as well, I hope you could furnish the committee with the answer and um, copy furnish my office po. And um, if meron pang agency na may mga ganitong problema, baka meron po pa yung alam para po alam din po namin sa Congress on as to how to address this kasi sayang naman po yung pera ng gobyerno kung may pinapurchase na hindi madidistribute. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you, Commissioner po. Pondo, uh, please take note of the request for a written explanation. Yes, Madam Chair. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Yun lamang po. Thank you. Salamat, Rep. B. H. Herrera. Next to interpolate from the majority, we have Vice Chair Joseph Jojo Lara. You are recognized. Thank you, Madam Chair. Magandang hapon po. Makastang uh, fuga. Ito nga. Um, nandito po ako para lang po ipa-manifest din ng support po sa COA no, sa inyong budget for 2023. Sabi nga na ni Chair, ni ano, Vice Chair kanina, Joe Boy, uh, baka gusto nyo pang mag-request ng mas malaki, nandito pa rin kami na susuport po sa inyo. No, kunin ko na rin po itong pagkakataon, Madam Chair, no, bukod dun sa pag-manifest ko ng support ako sa budget ninyo for 2023. Isa, meron po kasi akong uh, sulat kay Chairman, uh, ipapareceive ko po mamaya, no, uh, si Kalida, na ito po ay patungkol dun sa, alam naman natin na Uh, iisa ang hangarin ng bawat isa sa atin no, na ipatupad kung uh, na maayos yung mga pondo na napupuntahan no, na budget natin every year sa paggalaw ng ating uh, gobyerno. Uh, isa na po dito yung pagdidistribute po ng mga social services program. Um, ito po, uh, natutuwa po ako at uh, na kita ko po ang aking kababayan dito for quite some time. Hindi ko po ito nakikita sa probinsya namin pero dito ko po pa siya magkita no, si uh, uh, Commissioner uh, Roland, no, si Roland Trey. 
Uh, ito po yung patungkol dun sa nakaraang eleksyon na nagkaroon ng gastusi ng provincial government through dun sa nakaupong gobernador po ngayon na nagpamigay uh, ng pigisang libo sa bawat botante no, sa aming uh, probinsya. Dahil dun sa programa niya na tanggapin nyo ang isang libong ito para huwag nyong iboto ang taong bumibili ng boto. No po. Ngayon, uh, ito po ay nilalab nilabas ko din kaninang umaga sa Comelec. No? At uh, uh, masaya din ako na nagbanggit si Chairman George kanina doon sa pag-amenda niya sa mga uh, sa batas no patungkol sa sa election uh, ano natin no kasi ang palaging nakafocus po tayo tuwing election yung vote buying it's very unfortunate lang po no sa aming probinsya na ang vote buying pa na pinanggagalingan di umano no na pinanggagalingan ng vote buying namin ay galing sa pera ng gobyerno. Yun po ang mas nakakatakot at uh, alam ko, sabi ko nga, sa pagpapatupad, hangarin natin na mapunta sa nararapat no, na pondo talaga na pinaglalaanan yung pondo ng gobyerno dahil kakaramput po ang pera tapos gagastusin natin sa kung saan-saan. So ito po ang aking uh, uh, manifestation po ngayon. No, Idudulog ko po sa inyo, may request Though I filed a house resolution no, ta, sa investigasyon nito, kaugnay po dito yung request ko na po sa inyo ngayon, uh, uh, mahal na Commissioner, no, na sana bigyan po kaagad ng uh, aksyon itong uh, hinihiling namin na magkaroon po ng investigasyon no, na upol dito sa malaking uh, big and ano, a big illegal and anomalous disbursement no ng uh, huge public funds by the provincial government of Cagayan no uh, ito uh, black and white ko naman po ito sana mainstrakan po sa lalong madaling panahon no to shed light kung talagang wala maganda kung meron kailangan may managot lang po alam naman naman po natin ang uh, ang uh, role ng bawat isa sa atin, lalong-lalo na po sa inyo pagdating po sa pagpapatupad at pagpapahalaga po ng pondo natin. So, um, sana marinig ko po sa inyo, kasagutan ka agad kung ano ang mangyayari po itong itudulog ko po sa inyong request po. So, yun lamang po, uh, Madam Chairman. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, Your Honor, uh, from that letter po, uh, we'll submit that to the Office of the Chair. Uh, and dito naman po ang Chief of Staff ng Chair Kalida para po mabigyan kagad ng tugon yung sulat po ninyo. Maraming salamat po. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Thank you. Salamat, Vice Chair Lara. Pakisubmit na lang po sa Committee on Appropriations. Next to interpolate. From the minority, we have Representative Joseph Stephen Carraps Paduano. Sir, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. To the members and family of uh, COA, good afternoon, Paul. Uh, Madam Chair, before I proceed with my some questions, I would like to uh, express my... Uh, let be put into record, Madam Chair, that uh, this uh, representation when I was elected, nominated and elected in the plenary as a chairperson of the Committee on Accounts, in which uh, all audit reports of all agencies in government, and that includes the local government. Uh, that was August 10. I sent a letter to the COA, addressed to the chairman, Chairman Kalida, and uh, I just read the reply just this morning, but of course, the date is August 17, seven days after my, my letter to Chairman Kalida. Anyway, but uh, it's all about, my letter is all about issues on the grant and liquidation of gas advances in the local government. Tamang-tama po. The issue that was raised by Congressman Lara 
is all about disbursements uh, of uh, the local government. Tawang tama po. Anyway, Mr. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, in the letter that was sent to me, dated August 17, my letter was referred to the Assistant Commissioner of Local Government Audit Sector because this concerns the local government uh, audit reports. Anyway, uh, I hope, Madam Chair, that before the start of the plenary debate, this representation will have the answer of the co-chairman. I hope so, before the plenary. Can I get the commitment of the COA for that matter, Madam Chair? Uh, Madam Chair, Your Honor, yes, uh, yes, Pa. Uh, we have here the the ASCOM, the Assistant Commissioner on the legal, uh, the local government unit sector. Uh, uh, so, so you are the Assistant Commissioner. So they're telling me that you are not around because uh, supposedly the document or the answer to my request should be signed by you. But the 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 reasoning of your office. Wala karaw dito. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Assistant Commissioner Ray, you're, you're recognized. I was in, Your Honors, uh, I was in Lagawe and in Tugigiraw the last two days. Okay. No, since just from Tuesday to Thursday, so I was out of town. But I was in the central office yesterday, and I, I, often, I went over the, the draft of our reply to your, to your request. And when I talk to my staff, I, I advise them that we will course our answer through the office of the chairman because it oh. was the office of the chairman which uh, referred the matter to us. So by next week, definitely, we, are, we will be ready with our reply. In fact, we already, we already have the matrix regarding this unliquidated cash advances, Your Honor. Uh, thank you for that, Madam Chair. So I, I will expect next week, no? We are almost done, Your Honor. Thank you, thank you. It will come. Thank you. Anyway, Madam Chair. Thank you, Paul. Uh, let me proceed with uh, some of my questions. Uh, this refers to cash advances in local government. Well, in fact, tamang tanga na lang po na may commitment na uh, si Assistant uh, Commissioner dun sa letter ko. Now, Madam Chair, on cash advances, there are two types of cash advances. Tama po ba? Regular, tsaka special cash advances. Now, dun sa special cash advances, it refers to current operating expenditures and total expenditures. Tama po ba? Correct. Am I correct on that? Okay. Now, Madam Chair, if I were a local government employee tasked to make cash advances for my office, what are the rules, regulations, and guidelines that I must first read and understand so that I can properly liquidate such funds and avoid violating any law or regulation? Kasi, Madam Chair, dapat yung mga, uh, yung mga AOs natin, dapat naiintindihan nila yung mga laws, issuances, especially by COA, para at least naiintindihan nila yung just in case their liabilities. Tama ko ba? So, at anong, pakisahit na lang kung ano yung mga laws, rules, regulation with regards to uh, especially the bonds, no? the bonds for uh, EOs. Commissioner Bondo? Uh, yes, Madam Chair, Your Honor. Uh, we have a guideline on that. I cannot remember the exact number, but I, I hope uh, Assistant Commissioner Ray would be able to provide the specific guideline number or even so to give you a specific uh, copy of that guideline. Anyway, Madam Chair, I have here with me the seven important uh, law, rules, and issuances. Okay, number one. I will uh, allow me to read, Madam Chair. Number one, of course, is PD 1445, or the Government of the Code of the Philippines. Tama. Number two. Yung COA Circular Number 97-002. Tama? Okay. Number three, hindi ko na-discuss kung anong laman nun. Alam niyo na yun. 
Number three says, Coax Circular Number 2012-001. Tama. And number four, which is usually, number four, which is usually used by local governments, is the Government Accounting Manual for Local Governments. Volume one. Tama. Okay. Number five, of course, Civil Service Commission Memorandum Circular Number 23. Number six is EO, Number 77. Tama. Series of 2019 na. Ito. And lastly, of course, ang, uh, ang sa akin na, of course, uh, I might be short of the list, no? And lastly, of course, uh, yung core circular number 2017-001. Now, ang tanong ko po, kasi gusto ko lang balikan yung rationale nung tanong ko is that uh, all EOs should have read, absorbed, and knowledgeable about all these laws, regulations, and issuances. Tama. Now, but ang tanong ko lang po is, may ano ba kayo? May uh, compiled manual in those, in all those uh, rules, laws, and regulations that I have read? May compiled ba tayo niyan? Manual? Uh, Madam Chair? Uh, Commish Commissioner Pondo. Madam Chair. Andrea Paduano, your yeah. time is up. Yes, um, among those uh, mentioned, I think the most important there is the guideline on 97002. And for your, for your inquiry regarding the compilation, we have our GAM, local, the government, I'm sorry, the accounting manual for local government units but as of this time it is still uh, deferred so we're trying to improve it more so that it would be useful more useful to the accountants of yeah the and it is more madam chair and it's more easier for the eos yes. ba? para parang libro na yan eh. yes. uh, libro na nila na every time that they will be given the authority to cast advance yes. Andun yung guide nila. Tama. So, we're one of that. No? Magsa magsasalubong yung ano natin doon. Wala tayong problema doon. So, hopefully, hopefully, magawa natin yun. No? Anyway, Madam Chair? Rapaduano, your time's up. Madam you Chair, can I, I continue I in the second round, if you wish. Yeah, I reserve my right for the second round, Madam Chair. Thank you, Madam Chair. Salamat, Rapaduano. Next interpolate is from the majority. The Chair recognizes Representative Jervil Luistro, who is joining us via Zoom. Representative Luistro, are you around? Kindly unmute yourself, Rep. Luistro. A hearing, no reply. We proceed to the next one. Also from the majority, the chair recognizes Vice Chair Inodi. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Um, Commissioner, uh, gusto ko lang pong tanungin because uh, last year, um, our Sangguniyan Panlalawigan conducted um, uh, inquiries regarding uh, the status of our electric cooperatives sa aming probinsya. And unfortunately, um, we were asking for certain documents, including financial statements, uh, and they could not provide us or the Sangguniyan Panlalawigan with these documents. And recently, I asked the ERC if they have these type of documents. And apparently, wala din daw po pala. So gusto ko lang pong tanongin din sa inyo, kasali ba po ang mga electric cooperatives given that these are uh, member consumer or owned, kasama ba po sa jurisdiction ng COA ang ating electric cooperatives? Uh, I would like to refer this to Assistant Commissioner Winnie Encaliado in charge of the corporate government sector. 
Good afternoon, uh, Your Honor, Madam Chair. Assistant Commissioner N. Galliado, you may proceed. Thank you, Madam Chair. Your Honor, the um, electric cooperatives um, receive a loan from the National Electric uh, Administration, from the NEA, from the NEA. And uh, the electric cooperatives are audited by the NEA audit teams uh, all over the country on a cyclical basis insofar as the subsidy that they receive from uh, the NEA is concerned, the subsidy or the loan uh, that is given to them. So uh, that is only the scope of the audit of COA on the electric cooperatives insofar as their utilization of the money that they receive from NEA. But they are not, lim they are not audited annually. They are audited um, on a cyclical basis because there are so many of them all over the country. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. So just for clarification, everything else that, you know, uh, all the other businesses conducted by all these electric cooperatives, uh, capital expenditures, all these things are not audited by COAR or any other government agency, tama po ba? Um, yes, Your Honor. Uh, the audit is limited to the utilization of the money, just the money that comes from the National Electrification Administration, from so, the NEA. Because these are, are, I'm sorry, Your Honor, these are private, uh, private entities. So it's only the government money that goes to them that is audited. But although uh, private entities, I think yun yung yung parang uh, gray area, but again, uh, I yeah. know this is for another uh, matter and also for a different uh, department. I just wanted to cl uh, be cleared uh, kung yun nga po uh, under your jurisdiction. Uh, next po, uh, Madam Chair, uh, with regards po sa polisiya po ninyo, sa inyo pong uh, mga auditors, meron ba pong uh, um, timeline or amount of years that an auditor uh, stays in a certain jurisdiction? Meron ba po kayong shuffling um, or rotational ano? Um, timeline para po sa ating mga auditors? Uh, Madam Chair, Your Honor, uh, usually yung time uh, duration ng auditor namin will be given three, at least three years for reshuffling. Subject for reshuffling. At least three years po, maximum of three years? Uh, th every three years. Every three sorry, years po. Yes, every three years. Then we will have to make a, a reshuffling of all our auditors. So, ano, paano nyo po nakikita po uh, yung listahan po ng, uh, do you guys assess or do a performance basis dun po uh, every three years dun po sa ating mga auditors and then they get reshuffled? Yes po, through their directors and of course with the help of the supervising uh, auditors. And then they will make some recommendations to the CP or the, to the chair as to the kung sino ang ililipat or saan ililipat po. Okay. Um, the reason I asked po, uh, Madam Chair, because there are certain uh, reports po to our office uh, with our certain uh, LGUs and other uh, uh, LGUs also that uh, meron pong mga auditors na po, they've been there for five years, six years. Baka pwede po nating uh, tignan ho ito, uh, uh, Commissioner. At kung uh, meron po kaming mga report po sa amin, baka po pwede rin kami makipag-communicate sa inyong opisina at padala rin po namin ito. Baka na-overlook nyo lamang uh, itong mga listahan na ito. Uh, that is noted, uh, Madam Chair, and Your Honor. But uh, isa lang din ho yun sa cause nung, uh, yung problem ho ng tao. Uh, hindi ho namin uh, matuloy-tuloy yung pag-reshuffle kaagad kasi yung tao din medyo kulang pa kami. But uh, we are uh, kwan naman. Uh, on, on time naman kami sa hiring. Kaya lang medyo based on the budget, eh, nabawasan nga po kami. Thank you po. Uh, one last uh, question lang po, uh, Madam Chair. Um, with regards naman po uh, dun nga po sa, uh, given that the uh, Commission on Audit is an uh, independent body, how about po na if we receive naman po complaints within certain jurisdictions nga po uh, against their auditors, paano po yung proseso natin uh, sa mga ganito pong bagay? Uh, meron po kaming sector under the office, uh, under the office of the chairperson, ang tawag po ay eh, internal affairs office na ito yung tumatanggap ng mga complaints with regards to our auditors. 
So pinaprocess po namin yun through the, the Internal Affairs Office, of course, with coordination po with the uh, personnel or the human resource management sector. And then, um, as actually we have a, we, ha we can provide you a report of how many auditors po ang may mga kaso at saka ilan po sa mga auditors na to ang na-dismiss na po because of those cases. And uh, yung iba po ay still implemented pa and ang iba naman po ay fully implemented na yung mga decisions uh, as to our auditors. Uh, hindi lang naman to auditors po. Uh, we also have attorneys, we have lawyers, we have engineers also na may, uh, may mga, mga cases din, administrative cases pending with the Internal Affairs Office under the Chairman's Office. Uh, Madam Chair, Your Honor. Uh, thank you, uh, Commissioner. And then one, one last uh, question, uh, Madam Chair. Um, with regards naman po again to um, uh, the different uh, kinds of edges, uh, province level, uh, municipal and cities, and then sa barangay level, pare-pareho ang, uh, pare -pareho ba ho ang uh, inyo pong mga policy or guidelines regarding po sa, uh, yun po, sa mga disbursements nila, sa mga iba't ibang klase ng transaksyon sa ating mga NGUs para malinawan po ang ating mga local government units? Uh, pareho, pare, pareho lahat yan. Kaya nga po, yung na-mention kanina na government uh, audit uh, accounting. accounting manual for LGU na pinalabas ho, kaya lang medyo nakita ho namin na may kulang po, kaya dinifer lang ho namin. Once nalalabas ho yun, through the uh, gas, yes. through the gas, the government uh, accounting sector, uh, nandun na ho lahat yung rules um, applicable to all LGUs, province, municipalities, and cities. Pero sa ngayon naman po, sinusunod lang po yung mga circulars issued by COA uniformly pa rin po, Madam Chair, Your Honor. Uh, Commissioner, when, uh, once uh, this is completed, may we please uh, get a copy Anong final po uh, na version uh, nitong uh, guidebook or guidelines po ninyo? Yun lamang po, uh, Madam Chair, maraming maraming salamat. Maraming salamat po, Commission. Madam Chair. Okay. Salamat, Vice Chair Inodi. Before we proceed to the second round, let us give Representative Jervé Luistro another chance. Rep. Luistro. Are you around? And you unmute yourself. Yes. Yes, Madam Chair. Yes, and we can hear you loud and clear. Please proceed. Yes. Stop ka muna. Good afternoon to our honorable commissioners from the Commission on Audit. For my interpolations, uh, as the Constitutional Commission, which finds the ultimately the unauthorized disbursements of the government. I wish to solicit your opinion on this. We have a hospital owned by the LGU. Uh, for reason of lack of budget, it ceased from its operation. We solicited the support of the DOH, which find savings from its HPEP program. However, per advice by the Office of the Solicitor General, utilizing the same will result to technical malversation. As the Constitutional Commission, once again, who ultimately finds and authorize disbursements, may we be enlightened on the probably possible courses of action that we can consider to be able to save the operation of our LG hospital. Madam Chair? Commissioner Pondo. Madam Chair, Your Honor. Uh, we are talking about the local uh, hospital, so I think the local government sector can uh, provide us uh, an explanation on that matter. Pero yung HPEP kasi is national. DOH. May we know who the assistant, assistant commissioner assigned to DOH is? 
Uh, Madam Chair, Your Honor. Yes? Yes. Um, you are recognized. Yes, Madam. Uh, the, the HFEP is under the DOH. And I, if I heard rightly so, uh, of course, it would look like a technical malversation if they, have, they will have to use funds from the HFEP since I'm not quite sure if it uh, funds those. Yeah, it's a trust fund, yes. And it has a specific purpose. Now, to, um, to use that fund for another purpose will definitely be uh, tantamount to technical malversation. So probably if we can uh, look into the details of that particular hospital, maybe we will be able to come up uh, with a course of action to, to advise or to assist management on that. That would be uh, the, for the local government unit and for DOH because there are two agencies there. Rep. Oistro. Yes, Madam Chair, we will appreciate all forms of support and the help which the COA may extend given the situation of our LGU-owned and operated hospital. If I may proceed to my next concern, Madam Chair. Yes, please. Uh, to satisfy my curiosity, I understand that COA issues this allowance order. Out of the total budget of the national government, may we know the percentage of the disallowance order issued by COA, basing from the total budget of the national government. Commissioner Bondo. Uh, Madam Chair, Your Honor, what we can provide as we have submitted would be the summary of COA decisions, specifically on notice of disallowances for January 1, Janu I'm sorry, yeah, January 1, 2021 to December 31, 2021. Uh, for the notice uh, of these allowances, a total of 299 COA decisions amounting to 5 million, uh, 5 billion, 285 million, 740. Um, as to uh, percentage in relation to the, the budget, is that it? Uh, we, we don't have the exact figure as of now, Your Honor, Madam Chair. But uh, based on the reports that we have submitted, uh, you can um, observe the percentage of the settlement on notice of disallowances or the, the amount involved as to whether lifted ang notice of disallowances or denied a petition for uh, review on the notices of disallowance. Madam Chair, Your Honor. For our, yes, yes, Madam Chair. For our last, for our last concern, Madam Chair, uh, may I know the the top three agencies uh, where there is the most or the highest number of disallowed uh, expenditures of the government? Commissioner uh, Bondo. Yes, uh, Madam Chair, uh, Your Honor. As to the notice of disallowances on a specific agency, we cannot provide as of now, but we can say that uh, as a national government, na mga agencies, we have about 42 agencies with notices of disallowance and 10 for the corporate uh, government sectors. And for the local, we have one, I, I am referring to the entire year of 2021, Your Honor, uh, Madam Chair. And um, the, the total is about 4,126 notices of disallowance, including all other uh, audits, um, because we have, we don't have, on, uh, we only, uh, we do not have only the financial or compliance audit, but we also have fraud audit and special audit, wherein that those offices will also uh, issue some notices of disallowance. So a total of 4,126, but we cannot identify uh, kung anong agency yung mas uh, pinakamarami. Madam Chair, Your Honor. Rep. Luistro. Yes, Madam Chair, we will appreciate if the COA can provide us information as to the top three perhaps, 
agencies which has the highest number of notice of disallowances. And finally, me, Madam Chair, I just wish to uh, express my support to the Commission on Audit, to all our commissioners, and to all the possible increase on its budget. That would be all, Madam Chair. Thank you, and I apologize for the weak internet connection earlier. No problem. Thank you, Rep. Luistro and uh, Commissioner Pondok. Kindly take note of the request to uh, submit a summary report on the agencies, the top agencies with most number of disallowances. Yes, Madam Chair. Thank you. And at this point, we now proceed to the second round. Re Representative Joseph Stephen Carabs Paduano, you are recognized. Thank you, Madam Chair. Anyway, just to continue my, my interpolation, Madam Chair, uh, I'd rather uh, get the opinion of Koa uh, and with some series of questions that I will raise, and I want Koa uh, to study about my proposition with regards to issuances uh, by Koa. Number one, Ms. Madam Chair, is the, alam ko, pamilyar naman kayo dun sa Article 218 of the Revised Penal Code. Diba? So, Madam Chair, may I ask the COA na lang to please study for amendment kasi napaka-obsolete na to eh. Diba? For example, isahit ko lang isang example dyan sa 218. Yung penalty is only 200 to 6,000 pesos. Diba? And imprisonment of at the minimum period. So, uh, though it's in the justice uh, committee supposed to be in the house, but I hope uh, the COA will render its position or opinion about it. Now, I, I'm not, I am not uh, uh, forcing the issue, but uh, it is part. It is part of your mandate. No. Now, can I get the? commitment of the COA, not in this budget, I, even after the budget. Alam ko, medyo busy tayo lahat. I understand the situation of COA. Yes, Madam Chair. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. And second is the question of cash advances again. Doon sa MC uh, 002-97 as amended, doon sa fidelity bond. Kasi, uh, para sa akin, lugi lagi yung gobyerno. Kung ako yung accountable officer, binigyan, yung ako, ng, binigyan ako ng authority ng head of agency for a 10 million cash advance, it's only 750, a uh, 7.5 million. Di ba? Ang pwede kong bayaran. Tama o ba? Kasi 75% lang eh. Uh, Madam Chair, Your Honor, uh, as mentioned, here, um, itong pag-determine ng fidelity bond is under the jurisdiction of the Bureau of Treasury. Correct po. Kaya, kaya nga, I, I want to get your position once again in this matter. Yeah, Kasi, we will study. Again, again, ang sinasabi ko nga, this involves also the mandate of POAP, though it is from the National Treasury. Yes. But I want to get your position in this matter. Kasi lugi gobyerno eh. Diba? 75% lang. No, so that's number two. And uh, number three, Madam Chair, is uh, dun sa bonding requirements, no? Ng mga accountable officers. Kasi there are four requirements. Pero as I observe, and some LGUs, newly elected LGUs, come to my office and ask my opinion about this. Because there are four requirements. Number one, of course, the appointment chair, appointment designation, di ba? Number two is yung character references. Number three is yung documents submitted dapat dun sa fidelity bond sa division. But yung isa dito is the question of statement of asset and liabilities of a bonding officer, uh, accountable officer. So problema kasi dito, Madam Chair, uh, this is based on in your office. Now, ang problema kasi dito, Madam Chair, dapat uh, just, uh, just a note, just a uh, review. Kasi, there are instances, for example, one of the LGU that comes to my office, salary in the previous administration, in the previous LGU, chief executive, he appoints salary grade A. 
as accountable officer for an amount of around 4 million salary grade A. And the question is, why COA allowed it? Ako, just review. Para itong SAL-E na to will be uh, religiously follow. Kasi I doubt na yung pang-apat at importanteng requirements for a bonding, for bonding, for an accountable officer, mukhang hindi ito nangyayari, hindi ito ginagawa. Kasi kaduda-duda is, salary grade 8 lang, tapos bibigyan mo ng authority. Di ba? Now, ang question, but I will not, again, uh, hopefully, we will see each other in the near, near future during the committee hearing of my committee, which is the public accounts. But I hope, pag-aralan lang to kasi medyo, medyo dapat maging strict tayo. At least naman siguro, head or assistant uh, depart department head or assistant department head. Doon lang tayo. Kasi, kanunda today, sa na grade 8, then you give the authority for him to be accountable officer with 4 million. Oh, makano na yung ng salary grade 8? Yun ang sinasabi, eh, kung tinakbo yung 4 million. Sabi na natin, pagdudahan natin yung chief executive kasabwat, eh, if that's only 40 million, what if bigger? Tapos yung penal code natin, Article 218, diba, minimum imprisonment, 200 to 6,000 fine. So yung mga, uh, uh, Madam Chair, ako, I would like to to suggest to COA, and of course, I am again, I'm not forcing you, but I hope because we will see each other definitely on the coming uh, hearing in the Public Accounts Committee. So, Madam Chair, uh, before I end, again, I would like to manifest my support to the budget of the COA, and if ever unnecessary, we will increase the budget for PS. And that was mentioned uh, by Congresswoman Castro a while ago. Thank you, Madam Chair, and good afternoon again to the COA family. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, all points um, raised by the Honorable Congressman are uh, valid points that we will study through our legal uh, sector. Madam Chair, Your Honor. Salamat, Rep. Paduano. Commissioner Pondok, I promise you, magkikita pa kayo ni Rep. Paduano dahil siya po ang chairman ng Committee on Public Accounts. Magsasawa po kayong dalawa. Ayan po. Um, we are done with uh, interpolation, but allow me to ask uh, just a few questions. Usually po, ang audit reports natin would always begin with an accounting of the plantilla positions. So I was wondering, um, of course, you did mention that your authorized positions uh, were reduced from 14,000 plus to 13,283. But I am wondering why, based on the NEP, only 7,862 of these 13,283 had been filled, and it had been such in the last three years. Um, based on the report that we have from our personnel department, uh, your Ma'am Madam Chair, um, ang separation eh, mas mataas ho kaysa accession ho namin. Uh, sa ngayon nga po, as of 2022, for this year only, we have 468 separation already. Last year, we have 551 separation compared to 228 lang na hiring. So, uh, for for many years, let's say from 2019 up to last year, marami hong nag -re retire kasi oh, malaki yung difference, yung gap nila as to the age. Kasi may, kung if you can remember, may number of years so ang koha na hindi ho nag-hire. So, medyo naghabol ho kami dun sa gap na yun. Marami hong ngayon na, 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 na separate or nag-retire din po. So, yun po ang dahilan. And for the, the excesses naman po, eh, ginagamit po namin for the MOOE if it is necessary na since kulang din po yung budget namin. Well, I just asked this question because you normally make a comment on agencies' um, unfilled positions. So, I wondered why you have over 5,000 unfilled positions um, 
yet, of course, we had uh, about two representatives um, supporting your uh, call for increased plantilla positions. So, in lang po. Um, yes, Commissioner. Uh, wala po. Maraming salamat po, Madam Chair. Yeah, so in, but in other words, kahit na po um, merong unfilled positions, you continue to do an excellent job. So kahit na kulang-kulang ang positions niyo ay uh, siguro nag-overtawad po kayo sa opisina. Yan ang dahilan kung bakit high quality pa rin ang uh, nagiging studies natin. Ang huling question ko po, I know that this is a belated question. It would have been an appropriate first question. But anyway, better late than never. Itatanong ko na rin po, kasi kanina po sa dami po ng mga tanong, marami pong lumabas ng mga technical ng mga salita. Gagamitin ko na lang po itong pagkakataon na to. I'm sure marami sa ating kababayan na nanonood, uh, gustong malinawan. Can you just explain um, to the public kung ano po yung iba't ibang issuances ng COA and kung ano yung mga legal effect nito? Kasi halimbawa po, merong audit report Yung audit report, may recommendation. Ano ba yung ina-expect dahil meron din kayong um, subsequent reports on which of the recommendations had been implemented or not implemented? May expectation po ba kayo na lahat ng observations to sa report ay fully implemented ang recommendations? Sa aking pagka pagkakaalam kasi, nabibigyan ng pagkakataon ang mga ahensya na sumagot sa mga uh, findings and recommendations in which case there's really there should be no expectation na 100% talaga uh, or fully implemented ang lahat ng recommendations kasi syempre yung to an ordinary citizen kapag nabalitaan na merong observation or finding parang uh, all of a sudden ang sama na ng pagtingin nila sa isang ahensya. So can you just explain just very briefly no um Sa, sa anong punto na nagiging salarin na talaga ang isang ahensya? Tulad ng, halimbawa, pag umabot ba sa disallowances, yun na ba yung pinakamataas na antas ng pagkakasala ng isang ahensya? Or may mga pagkakataon pa ba na pwedeng italihin sa korte ng isang ahensya ang uh, uh, isang kuwa uh, disallowance? Uh, Madam Chair, Yung from sa sinabi niyo ang AOM, it may result to notice of disallowances or notice of charge. And then, yung notice of disallowance na yun, eh, aabot yun hanggang sa commission proper for us to decide first whether talagang uh, dapat ba bayaran o isa uli or i-lift. Ngayon, kung ano man ang decision and if the decision is uh, unfavorable to the person, the government official, pwede ho niyang i-file for reconsideration sa, sa, Supreme, sa Corte Suprema. Okay, so in other words, it begins with the audit report yes. na merong observation. Ngayon, pwede silang sumagot. Yes. At uh, kung base sa COA ay hindi siya sapat na sagot, ay pwede siyang magresulta sa isang notice, notice of, of disallowance. Yes. At pagkatapos nun, ay uh, kapag i-contest ang notice of disallowance, ay okay. dadalhin sa commission yes. na saka the decision na ng commission and uh, after that ay pwedeng dalhin sa korte. So yun, yun yung proseso yes, na dinadaanan ng ating kuwa. So yun lang po, um, salamat sa paliwanag. Uh, ako po ang magiging sponsor ninyo sa plenaryo. So sana po ay uh, tulungan nyo ako para pagdating sa plenaryo ay magiging smooth ang approval ng ating budget. Yes, so yun lang po, um, at this point, do I hear a motion to terminate the budget hearing? Madam Chair, um if there are no more, none of our members uh, wish to partake in the period of interpolation, I move that we terminate the budget briefing of the Commission and audit. So move, Madam Chair. Second the motion, Mr. Chair. Julie seconded by Vice Chair Jojo Lara. The motion to terminate the budget briefing of the Commission and audit is carried. This budget briefing is suspended.
malamang nagpagig mo. Tapos na tayo. Ay! Ako dyan. 